What's up guys? Welcome to my tarot channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. That's me. My name's Annie. Welcome to this All Signs Tarot reading. Um, please come into the readings with an open heart and an open mind. Take away only what resonates for you and release the rest. Check below for timestamps so you can hop directly to your reading and do remember to check out the reading for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. All right, let's do it. All right, Aries, what's up? Aries, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Who's coming in? Who's coming in? What's their energy presenting as? What's the storyline? Wounded warrior vibes? Someone who's maybe a little defensive? Someone who's very proud or has trouble getting over their ego? Um, let's see. But they hold a lot of feelings. There's a lot that went unsaid here, or they're holding a lot of feelings for you, but aren't necessarily showing that or wanting to reveal it, because on the inside, they're very sensitive. Um, yeah, with the Queen of Cups, it's Cancerian energy, right? Um, but there's a holding back of energy. There's a protective energy. But if they're presenting as this kind of Six of Wands figure, you might not know it to look at them. They, they come off as very bold, very maybe brash or proud. Um, yeah, there's something about their energy that might even be a little bit boastful or showy. But I actually don't think that's who they are on the surface. It, it feels like they've had to work hard to try and stand out or be seen. And so they got used to doing that. And the mere fact that it's presenting this way, it almost seems to you like this person's too showy, and so you might not be giving them the time of day, or they may think that that's what you desire in, in a person, or how that's, that's how they have to get your attention. Um, with the Queen of Cups, though, it always does say there are feelings there. So, on that note, how is this person feeling about Aries if they've made themselves known? Whoa, Aries, Ten of Cups, Nine of Cups, oh my gosh. I see the Fool, and I do see... Uh, I see the Four of Cups as well. So I think there's almost like a fantasy about this of you could be the one. I think, and if even if this is something new, maybe it hasn't come into you yet. It's like this person pictures you as the one. They they definitely put you up on a pedestal. They see, you know, this, this, like the sun shines out of your butt, like that kind of energy. And yet there's something about this where they don't feel confident that you would view them the same way. Or perhaps if this isn't brand new, Maybe this person has made some sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, gesture to flirt with you or to reach out or make it, make it known that they're interested, and maybe you rejected them. Or with the fool energy, maybe you just didn't even see them. Maybe you didn't interpret their flirtation as such. And so this person kind of still holds, holds on to the idea that this could be something, but they may also fear that you've already moved on or that you've already found your person, right? If this is representing how they feel, they might be worried that you've sort of cut them free and that you've already found your I don't mean to say forever person, but ultimately with the Ten of Cups, that's usually what that indicates. It's like someone that you want to build a future with or a family with or someone that it's like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. After you've been through, you know, trial and error in your dating life, it's like you meet the right match. It's like, OK, this feels good. Let's hold on to this one. That's typically what Ten of Cups is. So that could be how this person feels about you or is going to feel about you if it's new. But with the Four of Cups, I do sense that even if you guys do meet, <clears throat> excuse me and connect, they are kind of worried that, again, there isn't an equal match in feelings. Like they they may already worry about being rejected because here's the thing, they whether it's new or old, they are coming in with kind of like this hidden wounded warrior. So they have been rejected in the past. And so that might sort of always be in the back of their mind that, you know, any, any person that they develop feelings for, it's only a matter of time before they up and leave. So that might be some work your person has to do on themselves. That's not your job or responsibility by any means. Um, or it might be indicating like the truth that oh these are coming out already the truth that like again maybe you think they're cute or they're nice but you're not like madly in love with them um and so for some of you my advice would be give it time i think sometimes if we meet somebody and we're madly in love and kind of have that instant obsession that's not always healthy right so you know if I think it's will I think it's worth considering because I do think this person has a lot of feelings for you. A bunch of cards came out, so you do have past energy coming through. You yourself may be a recovering or healing from an ex or someone who broke up with you or someone who it just felt like you kind of went through the motions with a person and it didn't end up the way you'd wanted to. So maybe you're not looking to jump into anything too serious. Maybe you're looking to kind of play the field or just keep things light and airy and breezy, you know, valuing your freedom, not wanting to be stuck in and anything 
being too attached or too clingy um, because one or both of you is going through a period of healing with temperance. Um, but there is unexpected, I, I would say, shakeups in the area of love. Can you guys even see these cards? Sorry, I realize they're, they're like off camera. This is, you know, undeniably a card of romance. So this could be falling in love very quickly and very deeply. I do think that's what this person is feeling for you. But again, there might be apprehension because maybe you're doing some healing. Maybe you're doing some soul work. Um, it's funny, you you do have strong cards of romance here with, uh, with the Four of Wands, also Judgment. I, I sort of get the idea that if this is old, somebody got into a new relationship and the other person is still sort of <clears throat> fawning over them or checking in to see if they're still with that person or if they are, I don't know, maybe there was unexpected news of engagement and, and that broke someone's heart and maybe that's someone you're holding on to. Like, there is potentially something here about unexpected news of someone being in a relationship or the opposite, someone getting out of a partnership. If that's you, then it's possible that this person is looking to come in and make themselves known and be like, hey, are you still single? Because here I am. All right, so whoever this person is, there's definitely some complicated feelings here, especially if it's old, the, you know, wounded warrior vibes. But let's see, any potential action towards Aries in the next couple of weeks? Could Aries expect anything? Queen of Wands, I like that. Queen of Action and Communication and Conversation. I think this this person is going to put out a feeler. I think there's going to be some sort of warm conversation or possibly flirtatious energy. Um, and I, I think you might return it. Sometimes the Knight of Swords looks angry to me. I, I, I don't know if that's the case here. Like, I don't know if this is your ex checking back in on you and you're just not having it. But even if so, you're still going to return the message. If this has nothing to do with an ex, if it's something brand new, I think it's someone who's going to like blow up your phone and be very, very excited to message you or, or, you know, take you out to lunch and they're going to be very chatty and want to have lots of conversations with you. Yeah. You have a lot of messages coming through and you do have two very strong cards of movement, not just conversation but action oriented cards in their action towards you so aries this looks pretty good to me zodiac signs that want to come out in this reading let's see cancer cancer aries and capricorn we'll roll again and scorpio all right interesting and then just for funsies we'll pull you a couple oracle cards for aries whoa 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 those two all right so this says Lotus Flower, Enlightenment. So again, postcards, mail, conversations coming in. And then Butterfly, Metamorphosis, all right? So changes on the horizon. I love that. That feels very Gemini energy to me too, the butterfly. Someone who's very chatty. You know, you might be dealing with someone who has a Gemini moon or a Gemini rising or a Mercury in Gemini. Chatty, chatty, chatty. And then this says Healing Chaos, all right? So, and again, more butterflies. Look at that. So someone might be resurfacing from your past who's trying to, I don't know if it's make a peace offering with you, Aries, but trying to heal something, right? I mean, we did see the tower card. It didn't quite fall out. But yeah, you could have had a tower moment with someone. Someone may be coming back around to see if there's the opportunity to heal it. I'm not sure that both people are on the same page there, but this person definitely thinks about it if it's from the past. Otherwise, this could be something new that's just kind of flying in. The tower can represent unexpected, uh, unexpected gifts and blessings. This is waning moon. What do you need to release? So there is a message here of uh, of you maybe still holding on to someone else from your past. I'm not sure if it's this person, but I don't know. For a lot of my Aries out there, it feels like you got involved with someone and they've moved on. Like they're in a new partnership or they've gotten married or something like that. And that seems to be kind of heartbreaking for you or a difficult, right? Or needing to swallow a difficult truth or something like that. But it's almost like the universe is trying to get you to see that like there's actually a lot of offers coming your way here like there's definitely one if not two people who are interested in you but are you ready to open your heart again are you ready to open up and and you know try to be in a, a new relationship entirely up to you i mean do the healing work i'm not here to rush you but if you're if you're wondering hey is there anyone else out there for me yeah yeah you have a lot of action and messages coming through so all right thank you so much aries please do like share and subscribe and i will see you very soon for more tarot all right taurus baby taurus sun moon rising and venus signs Let's see who's coming in for my Taurus gang. Who's coming in here <clears throat> for Taurus? For Taurus, what is their energy presenting as? What's kind of a, a narrative on them? 
They're feisty. You have, okay, this combination speaks very highly about a sexual connection. And I'm not saying there couldn't be substance there as well, but the devil with the five of wands, this is very sassy. It's very flirtatious. It's very physical. Um, now, keep in mind, this person may, uh, well, for sure, this person has a very strong sex drive, and I know that won't make you shy away from them, Taurus. But with that, I'm not sure there's exclusivity there. And that if this is something that's kind of on again, off again, or you already know this person, you're probably privy to that, or you've been sensing that maybe there were other people in the mix. I do sense that. Let's see if um, let's see if we can get a little bit more on this. Uh, strong cards of Gemini and Capricorn, but it certainly could be any other sign. Yeah, this person may fear commitment. Um, I also think this person is stressed about a lot of things in their life, whether it's job or family or, I don't know, money, career, etc., um, where it's almost like sex for them is a very fun outlet for relief or, or even dating, right? It doesn't have to be sex, but eh, with these, it, it is, um, <laughs> you know, for, for most of you. With the Eight of Swords, it's like it's a fun relief. It's, it's a good distraction. Thank you, Spirit. That's the word I was looking for. It's a good distraction from their problems, but ultimately their problems aren't going away. And, and I'm going to wear my, you know, Taurus practicality hat here. It's like, well, we kind of have to deal with the larger issue here. Like, we have to address the elephant in the room because, you know, having playtime or naughty time or whatever this is, that's all fine and good, but it, it, it's almost like a... Again, like an escape where this person just ends up being caught up in the same cycle because they're not making any conservative effort to like make major changes or to do something different. And so if you're if this is your ex or whoever and you're looking for them to show up a changed man or a changed woman, they're getting in their own way. You know, there, there's an element of maybe self-sabotage here, too. To be honest, and I know this is going to be everyone's story, sometimes the devil can represent addictions, but it's almost coming through as like sex addiction or sort of like the serial dater. It's like they never want to commit to just one person because then that means they would have to close off options to others. And, you know, with Gemini energy, it's like one is never good enough. It has to be two. They have to have their hand in multiple cookie jars. So I don't know, you know... I'm not here to say absolutely not, but generally speaking for a Taurus energy, which tends to be a little bit more traditional maybe, um, or, or wanting that kind of Venusian Venus connection and loyalty, dedication, stability, reliability, someone you can trust. I don't, I think, I think the writing is on the wall with this one, but we will pull cards because that's what we're here to do. Um, if this is brand new and you know nothing about this person, I'm going to tell you this. They probably have a colorful past. They probably have a colorful history. And and maybe they will offer that up to you. You know, if they have Gemini placements, they might be very open, uh, you know, possibly, possibly. Or there could sort of be that trickster energy, too. So just make sure you know what you're signing up for here. But I would say this person may have had recovery issues in their past. And, and I'm not here to judge that. I'm just simply relaying the message. Um, there could have also been something with... Uh, a legal matter or, or possibly, I have to be honest, possibly like something in jail or having to serve time or community service or something with maybe like, uh, it's, I'm hearing money fraud or like, there is something, there's, there's, they have an interesting track record. Let me put it that way. But, you know, maybe they're trying to liberate themselves from the past. Maybe, you know, this Capricorn energy represents, you know, needing to make a, a, a good effort to, uh, to get their life together, to own, you know, to be responsible, that's a good Capricorn word, but I don't know, with the lovers and the five of wands, I'm not sure they're in a great place to offer long-term commitment because I think they're still doing a lot of work on themselves. How do they feel about Taurus? Oof. I think deep down they know that they can't commit and they feel really bad. This almost has an energy of knowing that they strung you along and feeling kind of guilty about it. Or for some of you, you may have caught them, so to say, or you, you may have found out some sort of secret that they were keeping. And, you know, when you went to address it, they just kind of uh, rolled over, essentially. It's just like, yeah, you caught me, hands in the air. Like, like they didn't even deny it. I, I don't think that, but I think they know that they blew it with you or or they're just, they're feeling defeated and disappointment or disappointed, but mainly in themselves. And, and again, if this is new, it just kind of has this energy of, 
they're just they're driving the struggle bus of life right now yeah it's it's like getting up out of bed in the morning is a challenge for them and some days they rise to the occasion and they're feeling inspired but it does seem like they're hitting a lot of obstacles and a lot of walls um a lot of red tape um and i do think a lot of that has to do with their personal life uh, again like work money career finances all that like just trying to earn a living and and maintain some sort of sense of like stability that's been a struggle for them and they do have cards of, of needing to put in the fight right needing to rise to the occasion or rise to the challenge and being in fight mode but I, I don't know I sense that there's like a distraction where like almost an escapism energy like they they go to relationships to forget about their problems but then at the end of the day the problems are still very much there you know staring them down in the face so to say so I mean in feelings is, are there any feelings here for Taurus I mean it's showing up in your spread so I mean this energy is around you yeah that chariot card wanted to come out again um, this may or may not involve a Cancer, a Gemini, a Capricorn. As I said, those are the major arcana you have. This person may live at a distance from you, and that's become an obstacle. Or you may have moved on without them. Yeah, if anything, that sort of feels like the main message here is you may have moved on. Or given them some sort of ultimatum, like either you're with me or you're not. And it's like, this person may have felt like they had to try and play catch up to you or try and make good on some sort of promise or show you that they're improving their life. But it almost seems like you already have your back turned to them and, and it, they're feeling very defeated. I, I think they feel like they, they lost you. Um, not, not my most like warm, fuzzy feeling. So real quick, is this person going to have any action towards Taurus? I don't mean to be rude, but part of me is like, I'm not sure why you would want this person back. I mean, if it was just purely a physical connection and the sex was good, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. But yeah, I think if you're looking for more, this person, they got nothing left to give. Um, they're just, Ooh, I, yeah, it's, it's heavy, heavy energies action so queen of wands very sexual very playful very flirty but again like is there any substance here is it always just going to be like this passionate connection because that's fun but it can only take you so far like it needs some air to you know to to warm those embers up to get that fire to keep moving and i don't know if this person has anything left or if they're questioning it almost kind of feels very sacrificial in terms of like this person knows that you deserve better so yeah look at that it it feels like I know I need to put distance between Taurus and I because it, it really does feel like they deserve better. Like if they view you in a queen of wands way, yes, you're magical, you're hot, you're sexy, you're this, you're that. But it's also my work hard, play hard queen, right? Um, it's, it's very strongly like Aries, uh, Aries energy for me as a reader. So it's like, I don't need anyone. Like I'm very independent and happy with who I am. But yeah, I want to have fun and be playful and passionate and all those good things. But like, I don't need you just to be clear. And I think this person knows that about you. Again, there may have been some Something here about an ultimatum or kind of like a bittersweet like I know I need to let you go even though I don't want to um, there could be uh, mommy issues daddy issues there could have been children involved in this connection um, it could also be like fear of abandonment too where maybe that's why this person is constantly dating around because they fear being rejected by one so they always need to have like a plan B it's complicated Taurus it's, it really is it's complicated it may involve an Aquarius I do think this is saying yeah you have two strong cards of healing healing some sort of um going through a chapter of healing that doesn't mean forever but yeah it's like focusing on you and then knowing that there's other things coming down the pipeline for you there might be an Aquarius or a Sagittarius in your future but yeah I mean in the next couple weeks I don't love the energy here just to be honest wah, wah, I'm sorry Taurus um you two, two strong cards of marriage contracts too so I don't know maybe someone in here is waiting for someone to get out of a marriage contract maybe there was third party stuff like I, I was trying to like dig for something deeper in the deck but it, it's still complicated it's still complicated <clears throat> zodiac signs so oh, there you go Aquarius Sagittarius Sagittarius again and Pisces we'll roll again who else Leo all right let's get you a couple Oracle cards and wrap her on up let's help give Taurus some good advice or guidance something they need to see or hear believe in the impossible the blue moon we actually just had a, a full moon a blue moon in Capricorn meaning there were two full moons in Capricorn this year which is unusual um, and then hold your vision the fixed moon something about that feels very Aquarian to me too um, yeah so so don't settle that that's kind of what that says to me um, if you're waiting for the good one that, that checks I will say most the boxes not the superficial ones but like you know just bare minimum right like treating you right showing up being consistent right don't yeah don't uh, 
don't don't settle. <laughs> don't marry yourself to the idea that this person is going to change for you. They need to change for themselves, first and foremost. This says yield, be patient. The star card and temperance are both cards of being quite patient, tempering things. The star card, too, just with like I, I, a lot of times the cards with nudity do indicate that idea of like remembering the, the physical connection, you know, that sort of thing. And then this card says thriving and trust. I think this is about believing that your future is only going to get better and brighter, but you kind of have to believe that that's going to be true. If you're stuck in the past, it's going to be really hard to manifest anything new and, and beautiful. So keep that in mind. Taurus, thank you so much for joining me today. Please like the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye. All right, Gemini. Gemini, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. What's up? Hope you guys are doing well. Let's see who's coming in. Who's coming into your life? What is their energy presenting as? What is their background, their storyline? What's their vibe? Queen of Swords. All right. It's like they have to confess something to you or tell you the truth or there's some sort of guilt or shame or what the heck. The star, though. But, okay, so they do want to heal something with you. Um, so... <sighs> Again, the, the messages come through the way they want to. So this might be someone who you're already sort of sort of, kind of connected to or have a history with. Uh, bear with me because there is a new thing here as well. But yeah, there, there's some sort of confession about they, they want to come back into your life or heal something with you. Um, and maybe they just have a lot of fear in doing so. Maybe it's not so much guilt or shame. It's that, will Gemini accept me back because maybe I hurt them and I know that they had to do a lot of healing work. and this. And so maybe there's guilt, but there's this desire to, to kind of win you over and get back into your life and, and communicate with you. Um, the Queen of Swords is, is a good speaker, you know, but also a good listener. It's Venus energy, so it's considerate of the other. So it, it's not just someone who's going to talk at you. It's like they, they want to be more considerate of you and make sure that you feel good about this connection. Now, if it's brand new, it could be someone who can't get the, get you off their mind. It's someone who's been scoping you out or checking you out. Um, it almost feels like this This might be something you don't see coming. It almost feels like this person has been in fantasy land about you and dreaming of you. You know, you're the star in their sky, so to say. They think you're adorable. They like your body. They, they're they checking you out. They're scoping you out. So I don't know if you work with them or you just bump into them on occasion or maybe they know you through social media, whatever it is. It's like this person can no longer live in the fantasy because it's just, it's too much. It's like, I think at, at some point they're going to take some sort of risk and reach out to you. And it's almost like a confession of the truth. But I think that really scares them. There's some sort of anxiety here with the Nine of Swords. Um, but, you know, I do like the Queen of Swords. Generally speaking, I like the Star card. If you are in a relationship, kind of, sort of, it could be that you guys had a fight and both parties are feeling kind of guilty and then needing to meet each other halfway to be maybe a little bit more compassionate and understanding of the other person, in which case this, this person wants to heal something with you. Uh, brand new energy, possibly Aquarius, possibly Libra. Well, let's pull a little bit more. So per usual, Gemini, you have a lot of storylines coming through, so obviously only take what resonates, please. It probably won't be your story every single time. I hope it is, but you know, I'm a realist. So here we go. Whoever's coming through in this reading currently, how do they feel about Gemini? How do they feel? Thank you. That came right out. The Empress. They, yeah, you're, you're the catch. Uh, they want to do right by you. I think they want to treat you better. Or if this is new, they want to treat you like the Empress that you are, you know, male or female. It's just the idea. She's very lush. She's very abundant, the Empress. It's kind of like this, um mother earth type energy to me it's taurian energy so you know she takes care of the land she takes care of nature and the animals and like it's it's very maternal like like energy but it's like that that's per, that's how this person feels about you it's like they want your respect they want your admiration they want your attention because they see you as as the full deal um, and strength. Yeah. I mean, I think this person is very sexually attracted to you or very attracted to your body. A couple of these cards are indicating a strong physical connection and maybe they're not in your life yet, right? This could totally be brand new, but I do think there's a strong connection and there's been a lot of holding back for some reason. This person hasn't felt like they could approach you, um, either because it's been a secret or again, it's like, <sighs> There is some sort of storyline of someone needing to confess something to you. Maybe it's just confess feelings. Maybe this person did have wandering eyes. Maybe they acted on something. I'm not here to incite fear. Um, I think Geminis are pretty psychic, so you probably already have a pulse if, if your person wasn't 100% committed. Um, 
but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. With the strength card, it's like there's a, a holding back. There, there's a like, all right, get it together. Come on, like get your head in the game. Like I don't know. Maybe this person is, is trying to appear more. I was like machismo or masculine or I, I don't know. They don't want to appear like a softy, but I think they really want to confess feelings for you. That That's sort of what I get. Or maybe there's been a whole, I don't know what, how this would make sense, but maybe there's a need to hold back on sex or, or uh, what, what's the word? Sus sustain or withstain. I, I don't know, but a need to hold back on the physical stuff. I, I'm not sure why that is. Um, and again, for one or two of you, this sort of like anxiety with the Empress and sometimes the strength card can be very sexual. For one or two of you, there could have been a storyline here of like unexpected pregnancy or, or something about needing to plan the future very quickly because, because some major changes. Maybe those major changes has to do with career stuff with the Empress. But yeah, um, there's absolutely... Uh, chemistry, at least at least on their end. I think they feel very, um, very connected to you. <clears throat> a lot of passion. But it's not just like they're, they view you as like a sex object, though. I want to be careful how I phrase this. I, I think they see you as like this, like the, the future mother of my children. So like, yes, I'm attracted to you, but like, I also want to treat you right. That That's sort of what I get from that. Um, and I don't want to exclude, you know, the guys or whoever, whatever gender you identify with. But again, the Empress, it's symbolic of like, I want to treat you right. You know, you're, you're royalty, so to say. And the strength again says physical connection, but I need to hold back because maybe they don't want to overwhelm you. You know, it could be something like they don't want to come on too strong. And so, yeah, with the page of pentacles, it's almost like they're trying to play it small or again, they're having to offer an apology because they don't want to ruffle your feathers or, or, uh, what do you say? Like add salt to the wound or what, what is that expression? They don't want to add gasoline to the fire. If there was an argument and you guys have to discuss something, um, you know, different parts of this may resonate for you, but yeah, it's like they are approaching you with an offer. They're, they're feeling like this is worth investing in or or worth fixing or worth trying to start something build something with page of pentacles um it's fixed energy and so one or both of both of you may be a little bit set in your ways and so you might need to find sort of a a middle ground where you can meet in the middle and again negotiate so it works for both people maybe something at one point in time maybe this was a little bit one-sided maybe one person it's funny my ears ringing after i said that maybe one person was always traveling to the other or you know something like that where it's like hey maybe we got to level this out a little bit and you know meet in the middle meet in the middle okay here we go feelings i think they want to propose an idea to you or mend something fix something you know the page of pentacles can be asking you out on a date there might be a, a some sort of major decision or crossroads coming into a relationship in discussion about the future. You know, do you see this going some, somewhere? <laughs> my mother had to ask my father after, uh, I think, a year or so of dating, you know, what are your intentions? <laughs> they always joke about that. My dad's reaction was, they're good. <laughs> no big deal. My, my intentions are good. Libra and Sagittarius. Guess who's who? <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, uh, this person's actions, potential actions in the near future towards Gemini. What will come of this in the near future? I see King of Swords. All right, so definitely conversations. King of Cups, big offers. Um, again, a, a fixed energy. So there, there's something about this is going to have to change and transform if you guys want to be in each other's lives in the long term. Again, travel or distance may be an obstacle or a factor. It could be that someone's getting a job in a new city and this person is like, oh my gosh, like I can't move, but I don't want to lose my Gemini. Like there's, there's, there's complicated stuff, but the fixed energy of Scorpio says if we can sort of undertake uh, a chapter of transformation, knowing that things aren't things are going to shift and change in order for this to become something of substance in the future uh, maybe you have to sacrifice something small in order to gain something big here maybe you guys have to push pause or be on a break while i don't know i'm wanting to say like while the dust settles i do think there's feelings and affection here i, I very much like the king of cups but yeah this yeah there's an element of travel here of needing to sort of do a long distance thing for some of you um if that doesn't apply i mean action towards you uh the chariot is a very strong card of forward movement putting on your game face so if this is someone who's shy 
try to ask you out, they are going to put on their game face, you know, warrior mode, beast mode, and be like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask Gemini out because they have so much to offer. They have so much to give you. If anything, Gemini, this person may want to settle down and establish roots sooner than you do. And so maybe you have some apprehension. Maybe you've already had this conversation and that's why they're fearful about it because they don't see any other star in the sky but you. It's like they've decided you're their person and yet maybe they're questioning. I don't know. There's just something fearful about approaching you with some sort of big offer. Um, and I, I don't know, you know, is, is it because that you're already involved with someone? Are they this, that, and the other thing? There could be some sort of liberation or disconnection with the King of Swords showing himself. Um, and then judgment, some sort of awakening. Yeah, something's got to give. Something here has got to change in order for this relationship to grow and thrive. The Page of Pentacles says there's an opportunity. This is a seed that we would have to nurture and grow for it to become, you know, a lush, abundant, successful, whatever. Whatever it is that we're trying to build, we need patience with Taurus energy. We have to make sure we have all the right ingredients, you know? But you got the earth, you got the water, you know, you got the swords, the conversation, the thoughts, the intelligence. What are we missing? What are we missing? Thing. We have the cups. We don't have a ton of action, but we do have the strength card. So yeah, you know, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'm very curious about what this, what this person's going through internally, because again, there's guilt, shame, or fear that, that is coming into this. So you are probably more privy to, to all those storylines than I am, but... Let's see, Scorpio, Virgo, Gemini, and Cancer want to be seen here. We'll throw a couple Oracle cards at you, Gemmy Gems. This says, hello again, recycle and recover. So something about the past may be coming back up for you, Gemini. Scorpio energy, judgment. Um, this may involve just needing to look back at your past uh, in order to plan better for the future in terms of what you really want in a love romantic relationship. And for some of you, that might not mean marriage. That might not mean forever. But whatever it is, I, I think you need to get a better, more clear understanding of what you want and desire so that you can manifest it. But I do sense that there's someone here who wants the happily ever after with you. Maybe someone who has strong water in their chart, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Possible, possible. And then this says, don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. So you do have strong Leo energy here. We're in Leo season as well. So don't let pride get in your way, Gemini. Get off your high horse. <laughs> And that could be what this is, too. Again, if there's been fights or disagreements, uh, finding that middle ground is going to be important. And we did mention the fixed energy. So, yeah, being stuck in your own way, being too stubborn, it's not helping either you or them. So, you know, the ability to recognize your own shortcomings and then make, you know, make better decisions. That's important for every sign. And then this says wonders. <laughs> I think that's a crystal, but that looks like something else to me. I'm not going to say what, but use your imagination. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Gemini, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Leave a comment. I welcome that. I thank you for joining me today, and I will see you guys soon for more tarot. Bye, Gemini. Hey, Cancer. Cancer sun, moon rising, and Venus signs. What's up, guys? Let's see who's coming in. Who's coming into Cancer's life? What is their energy looking like first and foremost? What's their background or storyline? Let's catch a vibe on that person. It's going to come into Cancer's life. Eight of Swords, Ten of Cups. So desiring the happily ever after, but they don't know how to get to it. Um, okay, so and they may view you as the happily ever after. They're Ten of Cups person, but I don't know. It's like they're, sorry about that. They're stuck in sadness. They can't get out of their own way or or they're going through some sort of loss or difficult situation where they're only viewing everything that they've lost or, or what, what has been spilled, what they can't get back. But what they don't realize is two cups remain. So I'm wondering, I, I hate to immediately jump to the past, but with these cards, I'm sort of wondering if this person isn't in your life yet, it's probably because they are on a healing path. Um, and they, they aren't able to move forward in some sort of love connection yet. Or they're stuck in another love connection that is very unsatisfying and trying to find their way through liberation. Because maybe this person doesn't know you yet, Cancer, but maybe nothing is motivating them enough to get out of an unhappy connection. Um, you know, it could be with the Ten of Cups. Maybe they're, they're in a marriage. Maybe they have kids, this, that, or the other thing. But if that's the case, it, it, it's not like, uh, sorry, how do I want to phrase this? Things aren't what they appear to be. This is something that maybe is lacking happiness. Um, yeah, there's a need to liberate or get away from something because someone is unhappy, even though it might be presenting as, you know, the, you know, the best thing ever. Um, 
Others of you, if this is a past situation, it seems like this person feels like they don't have a shot with you, like they missed their chance. Maybe they rejected you or you rejected them, and yet they're still sort of stuck thinking about you as someone who could have really been, you know, they're happily ever after. So interesting, interesting. What's going on here? So they're in assessment mode. How do they feel about cancer? Are there feelings here? They certainly think about you if it is from the past. Uh, and again, this could be something new, but if they're, if they're not in your life now, it's because they're still trying to liberate themselves from an unhappy situation. If it's not a marriage or a, uh, a romantic relationship, they could be stuck at a dead-end job where it's like they're not meeting anybody or, you know, they can barely pay the rent or there's something that's like, this isn't working and it's not the way I want to live anymore. So I have this vision of this fantasy of what I want, but how do I get there? That's sort of what's what this person is going through currently. So hopefully by the time they get to you, they know what they want, right? Uh, does this person have feelings for cancer when they do uh, stumble upon them? Let's see. Knight of Swords. A lot of thought. A lot of racing thoughts. And it's almost like they're trying to figure out how this could possibly work. So that does indicate to me, I don't know if this is something brand new. Page of Swords. So spying on you, maybe, uh, I don't know, Page of Swords is, is usually like my little spy card online. So maybe they, they already have some sort of connection to you. I don't know if they do work with you. Maybe they're checking you out, but they think that they may think that you're flirting with someone else. Like it, it almost has that vibe. And so there's something very like this person is just like stuck. They're stuck in a rut and they don't they don't know how to get out. Uh, not it's almost like their feelings are more cerebral. So it's like they're stuck in their head about you, but I don't know if they're necessarily emoting. So you might not realize that this person has feelings for you. So tell me, tell, can I get one more card? Like, what is this Knight of Swords wanting to do or wanting to say? Or what? what is the Knight of Swords? Why is that coming through here? Justice and, okay, Matana. Yeah, so this speaks to me about like a marriage contract. So I'm wondering, are, are you Cancer? Are you already in a connection? If you are, I don't know why you're showing up to this video, but hey, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to read the cards. So is there someone else who's like, fantasizing about you as they're happily ever after, but they feel like they can't move forward with you because you're already in some sort of connection or contract. Or again, vice versa. Um, you know, are, are you seeing someone and, you know, maybe they're, you're the side piece or I don't know, however you want to say it. I just, I'm just sort of getting, there's a lot of like, I want to, but I can't. Like, it, what, like what, what is that? <laughs> the tower. So unexpected breakthroughs or, or liberations. This does speak to me about someone is trying to get out of a connection, but it seems like they're already dabbling on the side or flirting or messaging on the side. But, and, and I mean, here's the thing. Maybe it's not infidelity. Maybe this person is going through a divorce, but they haven't signed the papers yet. You know, there, there could be something like that. But here's the thing, though, especially for my cancers who are pursuing someone that is on the brink of getting divorced or kind of sort of divorced or broken up, whatever it is. I don't know if emotionally this person is ready to get into anything serious because they still have a lot of like whatever this five of cups is, a sense of loss or disappointment or feeling down and out about themselves. Maybe they're carrying a lot of guilt that they couldn't make it work in a marriage or, or something like that. Um, I don't know. They, you know, the five, the five of cups says <clears throat> we're in the thick of it. It's not necessarily a depiction of the truth, but sometimes like our feelings, and I would say negative feelings are sort of eclipsing the truth of the matter. They're, they're starting to take over as the narrator or the storyteller. When in reality, the universe is trying to get whoever this is, maybe it's you, maybe it's them to see two cups remain here. Like, yes, you have to lose something and sacrifice something here, but like I'm setting you up for something good. If only you could see it. So a lot of times this card does say, what do we need to release? You know, where are we really clung to what is familiar or holding on to the past when really the water in these cups, it's, it's it's fresh you know it's satisfying it's it's good it's healthy whereas this it's like we can't get it back so it's almost like willing something to come back to life where the universe might be saying eh may, maybe maybe we let that one go and it's almost like taking a leap of faith that there might be something better out there so I don't know. These two cards together speak to me about marriage and I, I'm wondering if someone is trapped in a marriage or trapped in a relationship. I don't think this person is in your life yet, even if they were a person you connected with in the past. I think they're thinking about messaging you or trying to get a pulse on if you're in a connection. What is this tower about? So I think this might be someone you haven't heard from in maybe years. 
um, with it's like the thaw, the winter snow. Some something chisels through the ice unexpectedly, um, or something. Someone that maybe you froze out or haven't spoken to in a while. Um, or maybe you're choosing to do that. Again, if this person is promising you, hey, I'm going to get out of my marriage, I'm going to get divorced, I'm going to, I don't know, fill in the blank. It could be that, you know, they, they reach out to you for another passionate night and, and you go cold on them. It could be something like that. Or again, vice versa, someone that, that you were speaking to and there was a lot of maybe messaging or I, I don't know if I necessarily see sexting here, but maybe, maybe there, there's, you know, the Knight, the Knight of Swords is a great communication card. But there's a lot of apprehension, though, too. So it would be hot and cold if there is communication and quite literally hot and cold, you know, fire, lightning, and, and then like this icy winter cold card. Um, I also associate this with Scorpio and sometimes Capricorn as well. But yeah, there's there's conflict or someone who is internally conflicted about how to move forward. It feels like they're trapped. Um, and again, maybe it's career stuff where they, they just can't quite... You know, maybe they're a workaholic. Maybe they just can't get out of their own way to to nurture and feed a relationship. But I don't I don't love this. I don't love it. Even if they do see you as, you know, their future marriage partner, I'm not sure what they're doing to make it happen. Because again, they're just not in a place to do that. So I guess I would say have very realistic expectations of what this person is able to offer you because I don't see them changing, changing their tune anytime soon. Um, whoever this person is, is there going to be any action towards cancer in the next few weeks? Any action? The High Priestess is a card of silence and it also says you already know. You need to trust your gut. You need to trust your intuition. What is... Let's see. We have a fortune. Hmm. Sometimes the high priestess represents secrets. And if I'm asking what is the secret, the secret is the wheel of fortune. So the secret is future, future oriented. Uh, don't, yeah, don't be too stuck in the past. This might be encouraging you to expand your network, expand your realm, expand your way of thinking, maybe to not be so um, hell bent on a, a certain outcome or a certain person. I think this is about opening up your options um, and, and yeah, having a different vision for the future. Maybe there could even be an opportunity to travel. Um, I also think, too, for. Hold on, I'm thinking about this. Give me one second. If for Cancer Rising, specifically Cancer Rising, your seventh house is ruled by Saturn, right? And so Saturn is in Pisces, your ninth house. So it's like there might be something coming from afar or something coming from a distance or more focus on faith and spirituality or education or mentors. There might be a stronger connection in the future with, with someone who kind of fits that description, possibly a Leo. Possibly. I think there's a Leo who looks back at something with you and feels guilty as well. So you have Scorpio, Cancer, Sagittarius, and Aries coming through here. Let's give Cancer a couple Oracle cards. There could also be a, uh, a secret connection coming in as well with the High Priestess. <clears throat> so this is Anchor, Stability. So searching for stability, because right here, this connection doesn't feel stable or consistent. It feels flighty at best. And then bullseye, focus. I think this is about focusing on you and your future. This is my Cancerian card. So maybe you're going to connect with a Cancer in the future, you know, more power to you. But yeah, I think this is about being very self-focused and not giving yourself away easily to, to someone who doesn't know what they want. And for some of you, it's like you haven't even met this connection yet. So that if, if it's vague and not making a lot of sense, that might be why as well. Or it's just not your message, right? Sometimes that happens. But I think if this person is able to get a better pulse on, on what they want and to actually put effort into making it happen, then maybe it will be successful. But right now, it's like none of your concern or none of your business. Focus on your own stability. And then trust the universe. Love that. Always a good card. Again, something coming in from overseas you may have a connection with i don't know a sexy european or i don't know i don't know wherever you're watching this from cancer but like a a different cultural connection i could totally see that go on some sort of like like spiritual journey or i don't know go traveling meet people while you travel there there could be some some lush juicy connection there 
And then this says work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio. I'm going to put that with your person because that's a very strong Scorpio card. And there is fear with this, with this eight of swords. It's like, we got to move on. We got to liberate ourselves because ultimately the eight of swords says the only person stopping, uh, stopping you, whoever I'm speaking to is yourself. This is self-imposed limitations. Yes, life can get in the way. Life can present challenges and obstacles, but we always have the ability to act differently or do something slightly differently if we want a different outcome. It's it's great to dream about a happy future, right? But what steps are we taking to create that? That's sort of what's what's kind of happening. Maybe this is you, Cancer, but maybe this is on your person's end. I don't know. You're not meeting for a reason. You know, maybe this is rejection as divine protection, or maybe you're going to meet a different version of this person in the future where it makes sense and, and it works. I certainly hope that's the case. All right, Cancer, that's what I got for you. Please like the video, guys. I welcome you to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Hello, Leo babes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to all the Leos out there. We're going to do a reading for Leo Sun, Moon Rising, and Venus signs. Let's see what's coming in for you. Who's coming in? What is their energy presenting as? You got Venus moving through your sign, Leo, so that can't be bad, right? <laughs> Let's see. Who's coming into Leo's life? What is their energy presenting as, please? Looking to build. They're working their way towards stability. They may still have some hang-ups, uh, whatever that means. It doesn't necessarily have to be about an ex or a person. They may sort of be half in, half out. They're still determining who they want to build with or, or what they're building towards. They may have apprehension about their job or their career, feeling unsatisfied there. Anything else? What about this person? Look at King of Pentacles. Yeah, so they they may be kind of getting out of a place of tradition, or maybe they're getting out of a long-term connection, whether it involved marriage or not. Um, or it could be someone who's contemplating doing that. Um, or if you've already connected to this person, it looks like they're wanting to establish stability with you. With King of Pentacles, it's pretty serious. It's like, it's kind of like put a, put a ring on it vibes, right? It's like, I want to move in with you. I want to build a house, build a family, build a future, you know, be responsible adults, that that sort of thing. Like it's, it's traditional in that sense. It's also very sensual, right? It's Taurus. So pleasure and touch and taste and smells and aromas. And, you know, it's a sexy king. Don't get me wrong, but also like put your money where your mouth is. It's that type of energy. So I, I don't know if it's you or them, but they might seem apprehensive or, or debating, questioning if your marriage material or if that's something that you desire. Um, it could be that they're wanting to build something with you, but again, you haven't quite reached a place where things seem stable and it may be just not committed. And I don't mean that in a bad sense, but you might be tipping. I think they're tippy towing around the fact that like they, they want to do it with you, but maybe they're trying to be coy or play it cool and not overwhelm you and be like, so do you want to move in together? Because they don't, maybe it's, I don't know, it almost has the energy of like they don't want to scare you off. It seems like they have to tiptoe around something. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but... Just be careful that this person isn't secretly married. And I say secretly because we have King of Pentacles. Great. Love it. If this is something new, sweet. But if the Seven of Swords represents like the sneaking around energy with, you know, so there's three people in this card, right? So I don't know if they're necessarily looking for exclusivity, even though they may present as someone who wants, you know, the traditional marriage. There might be something where they're seeking something outside of the tradition or they may be interested in... I would even say like an unusual romantic relationship. There might be something actually kind of atypical about what they're actually wanting and desiring, but maybe they don't even want to admit that to themselves. Uh, they, they, I don't know. There could be, they may have been brought up to be very conservative or very this or that, but you know, in the bedroom, they, they may have want very different things than, than what they feel like they should want. I don't know. I don't know, Leo. There's a lot going on here. Anyway, let's, let's see. Or again, this, if this person has their shit together and they're making you legit offers, it could just be that they are half in, half out about their current job or their position. It, it's not necessarily meeting or it's not necessarily super fulfilling. Like they might be in it, you know, to pay the bills because they're responsible, right? King of Pentacles, but they might be seeking something more. And I guess that might be coming up because maybe at some point they're going to need to move for their career. And, you know, maybe that's something that you need to be made aware of earlier than later. So how does this person feel about Leo? How does this person feel about Leo? How do they feel about Leo? They're anxious about you. 
<clears throat> they may have had dreams about you or, or nightmares about you. I don't know. I don't know. King of Cups. But there's a lot of feelings there. Okay. So they're probably anxious to admit just how much they love you or how how deep their feelings run for you. They it's Again, there's like this, I don't want to scare Leo away. Um, they do have a fixed vision of you, though. It kind of seems like they can't get you off their mind. And I guess that could, for some of you, be inciting anxiety because maybe they already have someone. <clears throat> Ace of Wands. So the chemistry is fire. <laughs> the sex is awesome. <laughs> Ace of Wands, right? Uh, it's, it's passion, right, with the Ace of Wands, but also with the King of Cups. Again, the feelings run really deep there. So then what's the fear? What's the guilt? What's the shame? What's the anxiety? I think this person has like in some ways, like intimacy issues, but that might not be the perfect description of it. It's something to do with like the sexual connection. It's almost like a, a fear to admit what they really want. If you're already in a connection, this person may want to like, I don't know, this person may want to like bring in more people or they might be curious. I'll put it that way. Like, I, I don't know they, if this is a heterosexual connection, they, they might be exploring like bisexuality or something like that. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not here to judge that. There's just there's there's something kind of like uncertain here, um, and and I and something might be inciting shame or guilt or or fear, um, fear of getting out of a connection that isn't satisfying. And maybe this person is already dabbling with stuff on the side and feeling like you know I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. There are two kings here, so I I do question that. Again, wanting something maybe more traditional. You know, the person you go home to at night. Uh, versus King of Cups, which is Scorpio energy, something a little bit more, uh, again, physical in, in nature. Maybe this person wants to have their cake and eat it too. I, I don't know. Uh, I do like that the King of Cups is coming up in feelings. I, I don't think it's purely sexual energy. But again, there, there's something where feeling like they need to retract or pull back because it's adding more drama or chaos to their life. More so that they can handle right now. Maybe they need to figure out their life. Maybe they need to figure out their money situation, even though they really do like you. That, that might be coming through here. So any action towards Leo here? You definitely have Scorpio Taurus type stuff coming on here. <clears throat> and this may come through when I know Venus is in your sign right now, but I feel like when Venus enters Virgo, that might be when this comes to fruition. So I don't know the exact date on that, but it's soon. It's in, it's in like a week or two, I think. Actually, yeah, I feel like this person is going to try and remove themselves or try and walk away. <clears throat> But there's yeah, but, but they're still gonna look back with confusion or regret or wishing they had said or done something differently. This almost feels like you have to plead with them to like try or put more effort in. And so the fact that you're even having to have this conversation with them, Leo, I have to be honest. I know this is such a buzzkill, but like if you're having to ask someone to like step up and put more effort in, that's not a great sign right now sometimes it's complicated right with marriage sometimes you know you go through the honeymoon phase and sometimes you go through a chapter that's hard right and one person has to pick up more of the slack if this isn't marriage though and you're like can you just try harder that might be an indication that you're asking something of this person that they're just not capable of doing for you and so there might be a um <clears throat> there might be something kind of humbling or not humbling but di i guess disappointing um because this person just doesn't know what they want. They have that they have that indication here twice. With the swords energy, they're looking back, right? And here all the swords are down. I don't know. So like typically we want swords to be up because they're channeling high vibrational messages, you know, from God, from the universe. Here they're starting to pick up the pieces. It's almost like they have an awakening of, okay, I, I need to be better. I need to do better. And yet they're still kind of self-sabotaging or they're still doing that thing that it is <clears throat> impeding on whatever stability that they could be building towards or achieving in some sort of connection with you. Yeah, I don't know if exclusivity is what this person really wants. But it, but if that's the case, it's almost like they're afraid to admit that or say it. I, I don't know. The action cards aren't great. There's a lot of shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Or wishing things had been different, but ultimately I need to walk away. Yeah, there, there's the moving on card. Oh, Leo, I'm sorry. All right, so let's ask, is there anything new coming into Leo's energy? Because I think this is what needed to be heard. In fact, we'll roll dice. 
for Leo. Oh, I had Libra come out. Confirmations for Leo about who this storyline might be about. So Pisces, Gemini, Cancer, Aries. All right. Um, so I, I think that message came out because it needed to. But let's ask for Leo. If, is there anything new coming in that I, I can share with them, at least this early in the game? Queen of Wands. Someone who's willing to fight for you, but then gets tired. So actually, this says to me, there's someone else who's been interested in you, but they didn't think it was worth putting in the effort because you didn't, you weren't certain that you wanted them. Um, so they had to let you go, but whoever, and I, I think that was on your part. You may have rejected somebody or turned your back to somebody. Maybe you were just more focused on another option. There's still another person who thinks about you with Queen of Wands. She's sitting on a lot of passion here, um, but I think she's, she, he or she, sorry, the Queen of Wands, whoever this represents, maybe fire, Aries, Leo, Sag. This person is focused very much on their career and their money right now, and they've sort of had to try and disconnect from you or try and... Um, it's almost like to stop thinking about you. They may have been very obsessed about the connection or, or wishing that it could come back together, but ultimately it's like they had to let you go for the time being. Maybe you don't know who this is, but I, I think you do. I don't think, I'm asking for something new and honestly, this doesn't feel new. I, you know, this may or may not involve connections with children or someone who works with children, but you have a lot of assessment cards, a lot of assessment cards. And I mean, the month of August is kind of crazy, guys. Like astrology wise, it's not, it's not the easiest month. I'm going to tell you that so um you know keep in mind energy changes but yeah this the next couple of weeks don't look great to me i have to be honest uh, maybe maybe in the future you're going to choose to heal a connection with someone from your past or maybe you have a brand new connection coming in in divine timing you have to be patient possibly with a sagittarius all right oracle cards for leo Ooh, this has been a long reading here we go all right what can what can we tell leo anything final to to brighten their day. Let's give them good news. Never give up. Motivational phrases. You may need to put some uh, some post-it notes on your mirror in the morning, right? <laughs> Everybody does it, Leo. Everybody does it. <clears throat> never give up. This feels like never give up, too. So someone who, maybe they exited your life. I don't know who broke up with who. They they may be finding the motivation to try and to try and break, break the silence. I, I could definitely see that. And this says purity. All right white wolf action there purity. I, yeah again purity the idea of cleansing needing to go back to the past and and fix something or or wring it out to make give it life again to make it fresh again with that scorpio energy there might be some you do have connections from your past coming up I, you know undeniably and this is look at that a time for healing balsamic moon so there you go Healing some sort of long-term commitment, again, possibly with a marriage partner, being on the cusp of a divorce and wanting to fix it, or I, or, I don't know, healing some connection and deciding that this is actually the person I want for life. Maybe we were on again, off again, or we dated for a while and it didn't work out. It, it might. It might. Um, Taurus energy here, Sagittarius. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Thank you so much. Please do like the video, Leo. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, leave a comment if you so desire, and I will see you next week for more tarot. Bye, guys. All right, Virgo, what's up? Virgo, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Team Virgo, <laughs> what's coming in for you all? Let's take a peek at this person's energy, their feelings for you, and if they're going to take any action. What kind of energy is coming in uh, in regards to Virgo's love life, their person, whenever this person is showing up, how are they presenting, what is their background or storyline, possibly someone with strong Scorpio energy, uh, someone who's uh, looking, yeah, okay, I like this, someone who's looking for a real commitment, someone who has a lot to offer, Queen of Cups, but they might be choosy. Uh, they don't just jump at the first thing that, that gets their attention. They want to make sure there's something real and legit and secure here. Um, I think loyalty is very important. This is kind of like watery energy. It almost feels like someone who may have even been a past soulmate. I don't typically throw that word around a ton unless it feels warranted, but sometimes this is the 1111 soulmate card. So like arriving in divine timing, it could be that this person is going through some major change or transformation. And when they are, you know, as, essentially ready to pursue love again, they're going to be really uh, choosy uh, about who they end up with. But I do think they're looking for something real and something legitimate. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Right. I like that so far. Um, 
especially when the death card represents major change and transformation. Now, I'm not saying that whoever this is, you might not know them. That's sort of the vibe I'm getting right now. Um, but whoever this is, maybe they are grieving the loss of something or someone in their life. That's possible with the death card, but I'm not here to necessarily predict that, right? That's not really what I'm asked to relay in these readings. So we'll assume that it maybe is someone who has strong Scorpio on their chart or just the idea of kind of needing to release and let go you know elimination is very much tied to that sort of Pl pluto scorpio energy it's like what do we allow to exit our life organically what do we have to cut off what do we have to sort of embrace an ending of so it's possible this person is out of a divorce maybe they had to embrace the ending of a marriage uh, possibly to another water sign um, if you yourself, Virgo, have lots of, ooh, I like that. If you yourself, Virgo, have lots of water in your chart, though, this feels like this person is coming into your life. So I was going to say, what are their feelings? But the King of Cup wanted to come out instantly. I like this. Not only, it, it's a pair, right? Not so much because of the gender, right? Gender isn't a factor for me. So whatever gender you identify with or don't identify with, whatever you're interested in, I like seeing these two come out together because they are the same elemental pairing. They speak the same language. And with cups, cups are all about our feelings our emotions, our intuition, our spirituality, our creativity. So if you yourself find yourself checking the box in, in any of those categories, your person does as well. Um, and I do like this. It almost feels like this is a relationship where you guys both have a very strong independent nature to yourself, but you're also looking for someone who's going to have your back and kind of support you through thick and thin. Double Scorpio energy here. Um, so again, maybe that's speaking to your chart, maybe theirs. Um, or just the idea of, of a relationship here that could really change the game maybe this is like you know metaphorically spirit has a sense of humor but it could be like till death do us part right with these two cards frequently a marriage card um i i like this what are their feelings they have a lot of feelings um and it, it sort of seems like they're it's fixed energy so it's like they've decided on you now keep in mind if you're completely single and you don't have anyone coming into your life don't take this as a bad message or that it's not yours. It, it could indicate that this hasn't come into your life yet, but perhaps there's my earth queen, right? Maybe a good offer is coming your way, but you have to be a little bit patient because things, things may be in flux. Now, some of you may have already met this person, and if you're already feeling the vibe and you're just checking in, uh, so far, so good. What is this King of Cups looking to do or offer? If, it, if it's coming through in the feelings, please. Yeah, they're, they're, they're wanting to make a big offer to you. Um, this feels like a proposal, guys. So for, again, for if you're already with someone and you're interested, there might be a proposal to become committed or more serious or put a title on it or to move in together or to, you know, wedding vows. It could be something like that. Uh, build, build towards the future. I don't mind the Page of Pentacles coming up as the offer as long as it's being backed by the King of Cups or, or some sort of court card, right? love that all right so potential action it might be a secret i hope i didn't uh spoil any surprises but yeah for those of you who are with a person it, it may actually take a toll um i'm sorry not take a toll take a turn and become something um you know more traditional traditional standards in terms of like marriage or partnership so tell me a little bit more all right what is this person's potential action towards virgo please whatever we're allowed to know any co communication action conversation Let's see. They're they're waiting. They're waiting. The hermit in reverse. All right. Let's see. So that is your card. I think this is saying patience, patience, patience. Uh, I'm want. I don't know why this phrase is coming through because I'm not sure if it totally fits. But it's. I'm wanting to say like, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Some of you, I don't know if you tend to be rather impatient and you're looking for this to accelerate or or pick up pace or move faster. I do actually think you have a very good candidate or a very good offer. And maybe it's just a date, right? I'm not saying it has to be marriage out the gate, but a very good offer coming your way. But with the hermit card in reverse, which is you, don't self-sabotage. Um, and don't neglect or negate the fact that if you are kind of stuck in singlehood right now or feeling again sort of that strong independence and not connected with someone there's probably a very valuable lesson in that that's typically why the hermit comes up and it asks you you know what can i learn from this where can the wisdom be gained here so just make sure you're understanding that everything happens for a reason and as much as we may want to expedite the process or find our person tomorrow you know i hope you do 
But ultimately, it's not really about that. You know, I think it's asking the greater questions, what chapter, or not even chapter, what season am I in? And if, if this season is about you finding yourself, then embrace that. I think for some of you, too, there is a need to let go of the past or, again, as we said earlier, release, eliminate, you know, cut off the dead weight, that sort of thing. You may be going through some sort of spiritual awakening or, or soul development. Education may, may be important to you. For a lot of you, there's education here about self-love and, and really valuing yourself as well um, this doesn't really answer my question about um action but it, it does in that i think something is still in i think something is still happening behind the scenes if you haven't met this person yet they're not in your life yet obviously and, and there's a reason for that so rather than you know stomping your feet and kicking and screaming right just embrace it knowing that something good is is coming uh, down the pipeline for you Judgment, yeah, again, looking back to the past, this is a, a time for you to tie up loose ends, Virgo, and ultimately make room in your life um, for, for the good one, right? Make room in your life to accept new blessings, because that's what this feels like, really. Um, it doesn't have a lot of energy to me about an ex, so I have to be honest, if you're kind of sort of dating someone and you're really into it, this could absolutely evolve into something more, but this doesn't feel like someone that you've completely fallen out of touch with or lost communication with. Um, and the King of Wands wants to be seen here too, so possible that some of you may have some options. Um, Venus is moving into Virgo very soon, in the next week or so, um, so I think that's going to be lovely for a lot of my Virgos out there. Venus in your sign, especially Vir any, any placement in Virgo, but especially Virgo rising. Um, yeah, you know, Venus is going to add connection. It's going to add the enjoyment, the pleasure of, of partnership and connecting, love, balance, harmony, those sort of things. So love that. Possible fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sag, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Again, uh, Scorpio again, Virgo over here. Double water sign energy. You actually have three very strong cards of Scorpio for me, so just putting that out there again. So you have Leo, you have Virgo, you have Libra, and you have Taurus. How about that? All right, let's get you a couple Oracle cards and wrap her on up for Virgo. What else can I tell Virgo in regards to their partnership or someone who might be coming in? This says forgiveness. All right, interesting. For some of you, I, I instantly heard yourself. Forgiving yourself for what? I don't know. Um, or maybe it has to do with forgiving people from your past that did you dirty. Not necessarily for the purpose of reconciliation, but it's like, you know, what is that expression? It's like swallowing poison and expecting someone else to suffer. Some of you, there's an, especially with Scorpio energy, fixed emotions, fixed water, holding on to emotions or negative experiences that they're just weighing you down. You don't need them anymore. So similar to Scorpio energy, uh, you know, Virgo, it, it is ultimately about elimination and purification and processing things down so you essentially get to the meat and potatoes, the good stuff, right? Eliminating what is excess, what is extra, what is inefficient. So you may have extra baggage that's, that's just holding you back or tying you down. And this might be a really important, again, season for you to do some soul work and release what, what is no longer needed. And I mean that in the more spiritual, emotional sense. So this says, never give up motivational phrases that you are on a, a journey about learning to love yourself again, or possibly for the first time. And then this is coins. Good luck. I love that. So there might be a good influx of money coming in. Maybe you're going to be rich. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe. All right. One more Oracle card for Virgo, please. For Virgo. And this says, it is time to take action, the new moon in Aries. I think this is the start of, of a brand new chapter in your love life, and I think it's going to be good. I really like these cards, guys. So if it's not your story now, manifest it. All right? Thank you so much for joining me today, Virgo. Please do like the video. That really does help me, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you are not already. Um, and share with your friends. Word of mouth is huge, and it's going to help my channel grow. So anything you can do to help support me and endorse me in that way would be welcomed. Thank you so much, and I will see you next week for more tarot. Bye, guys. All right, Libra, what's up? Libra, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. And, of course, the cross washers. <laughs> Let's see what's coming in. What's coming in for my Libra gang? Libra, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Who is coming in to Libra's love life? What is their energy presenting us, please? What's their narrative or storyline I can share with the tarot? Let's see. Oh, boy. A lot of cards. A lot of tricky cards. My goodness. Okay, so your person, whether you know who this is or not, they are going through it. They're probably going through some sort of separation, but they're still struggling to get over their ex. Or if, or if there's no romantic attachment left to their ex, they are still having to do 
the blood, sweat, and tears or the work in order to finalize a divorce or to help move or to still, I don't know, finalize taking care of the kids or daycare or it feels like their life has very much been, uh, <laughs> wanting to quote the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, my life got flip-flopped upside down or I don't know what that is. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. Here I am quoting Will Smith, who I think is a Libra though. Isn't that interesting? My life got flipped, turned upside down. That's what this feels like. Um, so here's the thing, Libra. I am hesitant to be like, yes, dive in head first, because it does seem like this person is wanting to make you some sort of offer or approach you with, you know, a date or some flirtation, some romance. But underneath this, like, hey, I'm interested, there's a lot going on where I don't know if they're in the best place to be dating. Um, and who am I to make that judgment, right? Like I'm saying that sort of with, you know, take this with a grain of salt, but I don't know. These are some, some challenging energies, something to do with separation or abandonment issues. Um, this person could also, if it doesn't have to do with like divorce type stuff, I don't typically predict this and I'm not predicting this. I think this would have already happened, but it's possible that this person may have lost someone close to them, right? Particularly a family member, particularly a parental figure. They, it, this may have been the first time in their life where they've lost someone in their family or someone very close to them. And so they're very uncertain how to proceed. They might be going through um, a lot of like legal documentation and, and I don't know, needing to get things sorted out. That's what I would say. And they are very, very busy. So I said this to someone else. It almost feels like maybe they're trying to pursue dating as a means of escape so that they don't have to think about all the heavy stuff that is very much going on in their life. You know, five of cups, death card, 10 of wands, something is exhaustive. Something is emotionally draining. This person is still hurt or healing from something. And seven of swords, I don't necessarily think it's liar, cheat, or thief stuff. I think this is someone who's very indecisive about what to do next. And they're caught in a tricky position, you know? It's like they want to move on, but they can't, or they wish they could escape, but they also have responsibilities. Um, but something here, like, and I mean this is a metaphor, it's like you can't escape death. So whatever is happening in their life, metaphorically, it's it's undergoing major transformation with the death card. And it's like, it's like you got to pay the piper. There, you know, it may even have to do with money or taxes or, or being in financial debt. There's something like that where it's like, even if they present as completely having it all together, I'm not necessarily saying they're lying, but they might not be being as forward with the truth as maybe you would appreciate because yeah, it's like, it's like they're trying to hide the scars or they're trying to hide the, uh, that was significant for some of you too. I don't know why I said scars, but it's like, they're, they're trying to hide the kind of the ugly stuff that you don't necessarily want to see. And I don't mean that in, in like a, a, um, judgmental thing about their physical appearance. I meant that more as a metaphor, but anyway, here we go. I just don't want to offend anybody. That's never what I'm out to do. I'm just, I'm a little bit like, oof, I don't know if this person should be dating. Now, if you're already with this person, it's possible that they are just going through a personal crisis and it, it's not an indication necessarily about you and them losing interest in you. Page of Pentacles, it's a page offer. It's a childlike offer. So they're doing what they can, but I always kind of say in metaphor, how much can you really expect from a child or someone who just, they have a limited uh, ability to give right now. So cater your expectations accordingly. That, that's what I would say here. All right. Now that does kind of make sense. Um, you know, when I think about it, Venus is about to go into Virgo. So for my Libra risings anyway, Virgo rules your 12th house of, of what is hidden and sometimes self undoing, right? So when your chart ruler, Venus, which also has to do with our love life and romantic partnerships, when, it, when it's moving through your 12th house, sometimes there's endings or breakups or severing. Now, if this is brand new, it's possible that your future romantic partner is really going through it. And maybe by the time Venus comes into Libra, Libra, I think that's going to be a welcome change. I think it's going to be a welcomed relief. I think there's going to be more ability for connections and partnerships to kind of take route and flourish and be nourished. Right now, though, eh, eh. So you may have to be a little bit patient. But that being said, if this makes sense with someone who, who you know is going through a personal crisis right now, let's keep let's keep reading for it. Um, how does this person feel about Libra? What are the feelings there, please, spirit? anxiety assessment they they do like you they wish that they could offer you everything you know they they see you as uh as pretty damn amazing libra um 
I think they wish they could offer you more, especially in a financial way. If it's not financial, it's just they they wish they had their life together more. Um, there might be crisis going on in their family. A lot of time and effort may be putting, being put into family matters, matters of the home, siblings, uh, drama, I'm wanting to say, or again, possibly needing to go through some sort of legal process involving a family member. Maybe they're having to move houses or find a new location for mom or dad. So like they have their plate full. They do think about you. Um, and this isn't for everybody, but I have to say there is one message here. If they worry that maybe you might be a little bit too materialistic or possibly they think that you're out of their league. It could be that like they, you know, they would pale in comparison to anyone else who tries to date you because they just they have self value issues or self worth issues right now. Um, they it's like they they wish they could be better for you. That That's the the thing here. Um, for one or two of you, it's possible. It's possible that someone here is already married. I don't know if that's you or them. That's not the main storyline coming through, but if that's the case, they're wondering if they should continue to give to a relationship that the writing might be on the wall if there was sort of infidelity or cheating energy. You know, outlook not so good, right? I'm never here to endorse that, but I'm also not here to judge. I'm just here to read the tarot cards as, as they present. So if, if no one has a husband, wife, probably not your story then. Um, I, I think ultimately the feelings, there's shame or there's guilt regarding money or self-worth issues maybe somebody lost their job and they're scrambling you know maybe they're having to play catch up on something and 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 i think maybe too they're worried that they don't want to lead you on or if it's already past that point they're feeling very guilty that they have led you on like knowing damn well that like they can't really produce anything of substance for you in terms of, of a relationship oh libra you had a good reading last week um this one this one looks tricky guys <clears throat> some of you have an influx of money coming in. I don't know why that's coming through in a relationship, but maybe you're, maybe the next person after this may help benefit you in, in some financial way or have some sort of connections to money that, that could, I don't know, support you or your business, something like that. So potential action. All right. So there is, that, that is a good action card. There's movement, there's energy, there's a lot of messages. What are these messages about? Patience. It's about healing. It's about balance. It's about moderation. Um, possibly something to do with needing to heal the physical body. I don't know if it's sobriety or they broke a leg or it is a very strong card of healing. Some of you are going to end up moving towards a Sagittarius. Um, because, yeah, it's interesting. This is very swift, rapid action to me. Um, and this is very slow. It's very meandering. It's like, you know, dipping our toe in a, a foot at a time. It's, they are both Sagittarius cards, but there's something very opposite uh, about this. And so I feel like you guys are on opposite timelines or someone is really wanting to rush the process or expedite something and someone else is just like, I'm taking it a day at a time, kind of unapologetically. And and if it, that's this person, rightfully so, um, <clears throat> here's the thing though i i see this person continuing to message you i don't think they're going to come through a changed person anytime soon but i do think they're going to continue to court you and romance you or i don't know if this is sexting or if you guys are making plans to meet up the thing is with these two cards uh, like the knight of cups makes love offers and and this is absolutely action and movement but it is requiring patience and balance so there could be delays in this person asking you out if you guys are already kind of sort of dating or seeing each other i see more of that happening but i don't see it happening consistently or or more frequently i think you're going to get a little bit of time when you can um, and, and again, to, like, I'm not trying to uh, make anyone feel some, some type of way here, but it's like this person just doesn't seem like they're in a great spot. So I'm hoping they're not promising you the sun and the moon and the stars and not delivering on it. If they asked you out, I think it's because they really want to. And you guys probably will go out. But I don't know. I keep wanting to reference the timeline of this is a little bit odd. But yeah, look, there's your Ace of Cups. So um don't put your life on pause for anyone but if you can be patient and have sort of a hands-off approach and just sort of i'll see what comes of it without getting stressed out 
great. I, I think you will probably meet up and go on a date or two. Um, this could also indicate you taking action to move away from something that it's just not coming into, into reality. In which case, if you're, if you pursue another prospect, maybe that's what this Ace of Cups is. Maybe it's something new. There could be an apology in order to, if somebody flaked on you or made plans and had to cancel last minute, there could be an apology and this person is trying to make it right. But I almost wonder, are they not respecting their own health and body and, and schedule? Are they, are they trying to be everybody's hero at once? Like, are they trying to please their family? Are they trying to please this person and the boss and you? It, it's like they're spread too thin. Thank you, spirit. Who's coming through in this reading? So I have double Capricorn energy. Oh, I have triple Capricorn energy. So this person may also have a strong Saturn or some Aquarius in their chart. Uh, and then I have Virgo. So we'll roll again. Anyone else who's coming out in this reading? And then, I, okay, there's Aquarius and there's Virgo again. And Cancer. All right. So a couple Oracle cards. It's funny. I almost called you Virgo. Um, in fact, I may have earlier. So if I did, I apologize. There is, there is something about kind of Virgo energy coming into this, but I don't know why. So anyway, for Libra, <laughs> thank you. So this is traffic cone, caution. I feel like that's warranted. Again, like there's something, there's something that the universe is trying to bring to your attention here. It's not all smooth sailing, and you already know that. You already know that. And then this says bees community. All right. So uh, to be honest, this feels very much like, um, what is that app? Um, Bumble, right? With the bumblebees, right? It feels like going out and meeting people, networking, being part of social groups and social dynamics. I wouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. I, I, I would see kind of what, uh, what comes of this. You know, maybe it's just going to be fun, but I don't know how nourishing and sustainable it's going to be. It feels a little bit flighty with Sagittarius and Pisces energy. It's mutable, so it changes. It's not always consistent. For Libra, please, for Libra. So this is solitude. All right, solitude. So <clears throat> maybe a little bit of alone time. Maybe, maybe this person has gone through their own sort of a soul journey or soul awakening. <clears throat> And let's see, first quarter moon, your commitment is being tested. And I feel like that's what this person is going through too. Yeah, for some of you, it's like they're people pleasing. It's like they're wanting to show up for you and make good on their promise, even to their own detriment. I, I hope that makes sense. Or what, are you dating another Libra? Come on now. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. And then this says new moon in Pisces, meditate and contemplate. That's what this feels like, is asking yourself the greater questions, why? Why this connection means so much to you, why you want to nurture it, why you want to feed it, why you want to, you know, constantly be blowing up this person's phone. I'm not saying that that's right or that that's wrong or that I have an opinion on it, but I think it's always good to check in with yourself and ask the questions why, you know? All right, Libras, that's what I got for you. Uh, check out last week's reading. I think you had a really juicy one. So um, I hope this makes sense to you, but it won't be your reading every time. Um, but thank you for being here with me today. I do appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next week for more tarot. Bye, Libra. Hello, Scorpio. Scorpio, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to your tarot reading. Let's see who's coming in for you. Your love life, your romantic life, your sex life, dating, etc. Let's talk about this person who's coming in or who is in Scorpio's life. What is their energy presenting as? What is the storyline I can share about this person? Let's see. Three of Swords, the Queen of Pentacles, someone who may be healing from a divorce or a separation or a split. But yeah, like they're back on the market. Um, this is someone who's experienced a lot of loss and disappointment in their life. Um, but they, I actually like the Knight of Cups here though, because it's like they, they're still optimistic. You know, the Queen of Pentacles in a negative way with Capricorn energy, a strong Saturn, they could be very jaded. They could be very pessimistic, but you know what? They choose to see the bright side of the coin. Um, they choose to get up out of the bed in the morning and, and make the most of it. So I do like this. There is a, there's a hopeless romantic that, you know, yes, I've been through a lot. I've put up with a lot. I've dealt with a lot, but you know what? Like I've proven my strength to myself. I know that I have the ability ability to heal and it's almost like they don't let things rattle them the way the way they used to so yeah it's like there's there's someone on the hunt uh romantically they're they're looking to to catch a good a good thing in their cup so to say i think they have a lot to offer i think there might be something kind of creative or dreamy or artistic about this person but they actually sit on a lot of substance so it's not kind of like this fly by night 
completely immature person, they seem to be very well grounded. You know, maybe the Queen of Pentacles represents having a, a good amount of money. It doesn't have to, though. I think really the Queen of Pentacles here, it's talking about looking for something a little bit maybe more traditional or uh, looking to, to nurture a relationship and develop it into the future. It's not just necessarily looking for like a quick, you know, fix uh, or, you know, uh, sex or, or whatever. Like, you know, yes, Knight of Cups likes that too, but there's yeah, I don't know. It, it, there's more to it than, than I think maybe you realize at first. Or again, um, I shouldn't say again, but there's something where appearances are not always what they seem. But I mean that actually in a good way. So let's let's see. There could be someone coming through with an apology to you, Scorpio, as well. It could be someone who wants to mend something with you, especially if you guys have a history together. Um, I could see maybe you took a break or maybe you just kind of went through a, a period. It's funny, I almost said trial separation, which is not really my phrasing, so that was very much channeled. Maybe some of you were considering breaking up and tried some time apart. Um, or if you are married, maybe it's just you guys were going through a bit of a rough patch. It seems like things might be changing for the better. These two cards together can indicate major healing. So tell me a little bit more. How does this person feel about Scorpio? How does this person feel about Scorpio, please? As much as we're allowed to know. This card has come out a lot. So this is a card of wondering. Uh, it's a card of do I stay or do I go? You know, do I tend to my garden and, and see it through to the end to make sure that things, you know, become lush and abundant? Or do I cut my losses? Do, do I call it quits? So um, I think this person is still figuring out how they feel about you or if they definitely have feelings for you and have made that known. They're wondering if you return those feelings. They're, they're sort of lost. I think they're a little bit confused, especially about their future. There may have been some disappointing news that came in about money, about career, about something. And so now they're sort of having to reassess where they want to go from here. But again, it's not sort of like a sad sack energy from what I see. It's not like, you know, all hope is lost. There's there's a lot of like critical thinking going on here. So I think I don't know with I, they're wondering if they should continue to build with you. So in that case, it feels like this isn't something new. If it is new and you don't know this person, they've been through their own journey of healing and wellness. They're trying to get better for themselves. Um, in which case, if, if they met you or know you casually or through a friend of a friend, they might be wondering if you're single or if you're available or if, if you were flirting with them at that party or something like that. <clears throat> There, there may also be a question, I think there's a question of how you feel, and there may also be a question here of, of if, I don't know what I, why I want to use this phrase, but sort of like out of, out of one's league. So I think that's kind of like a bullshit thing anyway, but also like I get that that's a phrase that people use. So I don't know if they're wondering if they're not good enough for you or vice versa. Um, the thing is, the Queen of Pentacles typically is fairly assured that they do have a lot to offer, and they do. I, I think there's something to that, but they may have been through a lot of pain or rejection, and maybe throughout the years other people have made them question that. So it's almost like they actually don't see themselves as great or as worthy as they truly are. It's like they see themselves as a knight, but they're really a queen. And and gender's not a thing here. I, I ask you not to read into that. But like they see themselves, you know, in the hierarchy, right, as a knight when really they're a queen. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if maybe they have high expectations of love or again, kind of like fantasy, hopeless, romantic. Maybe there's some sort of like negotiation there of I don't know if it has to do with accepting people as they really are or I, like, I, I don't know what that is, but they don't see themselves maybe as fully and wholly deserving of everything that they want. And so I'm wondering if they're questioning, do I settle? Do I really go for it? And I'm not saying that being with you means settling. It could be that there, there may even almost be an assumption that you're not interested. And I mean, they are showing up in your energy. So I'm thinking eventually this person is going to make it known. But maybe they know that you have other suitors or, or other prospects. I don't know. Do you? <laughs> I think this person feels overwhelmed by emotions. And so rather than, it's like a very mature Knight of Cups, not my typical Knight of Cups energy. Um, you know, Pisces is mutable. It doesn't have good boundaries, right? It just, it, it's always expanding. It's Neptune. It's like clouds. It's smoke. It's not contained. It's like the ocean. It's just free flowing. So a lot of times when Knight of Cups comes up, it's like this person loves everybody. There's no discrimination, right? Um, but I don't know, with the, with the Queen of Pentacles, that, that's rather rigid. It's Saturn energy. Saturn loves a good boundary. So that, that's what I mean. This is a very interesting dynamic here. So I don't necessarily sense that they have multiple candidates. I think they're thinking that you do. 
I know I'm repeating myself, but that's why I'm kind of like, in terms of feelings, they're either feeling overwhelmed or feeling less than or feeling like you don't see them. They may be feeling like they're in competition for your attention. That could be this, this three of pentacles. So what is, is this person going to have any action towards Scorpio? Any action or communication, anything I can share with Scorpio in terms of in the next few weeks? Will anything come of this connection or thank you? And it's kind of a silent card. It's also a card of, of keeping secrets, too. So it's like, does this person have a secret affection for you? Maybe it hasn't been known or it hasn't been communicated that this person has feelings for you. Again, maybe this is something that if you are already with this person and it's not totally new, maybe this person wants to come back around to try and heal something with you. That's entirely possible. <clears throat> I do question if if this is a person that has been in your life and you've been with them romantically, physically, sexually dating, do you want the same things? In terms of like you have a good card of building towards the future, you know, being a team, and yet there's assessment there. So it's almost like emotionally, your your vision, what you feel would be the right, you know, move for the future of what you want and desire. Do you want different things? Does it feel like life is pulling you in different directions? I, I'm just kind of posing that question. Why the high priestess? <clears throat> I think this person is either playing hard to get or pretending that they don't notice you, but they are very much watching you. Uh, the high priestess card, she is like a very like intense vision or a very intense stare, right? She's staring you down. It can be a little bit intimidating, but it's also a very spiritual card. It's a very mystical card. Again, underneath kind of this watery energy, which could be written off as, oh, you know, they're like a spiritual junkie. Oh, they're a, you know, hopeless romantic. You know, they're the, the starving artist. Whatever these sort of negative um, judgments maybe of like watery energy, you know, too emotional, too this, too that. Underneath that, there's earth energy. So are you guys like mirroring each other? Is there, I mean, maybe you have very strong water and earth in your chart. But underneath that, there's actually a lot more substance. Um both these cards can indicate other like the quote unquote other woman. So I, I don't I want to remove the word woman from that and make it more of like another option. Sometimes the seven of cups can talk about that as well as the three of pentacles. So for, for some of my Scorpios, whether you're interested in men or women, it could be that you're you yourself may be deciding between options or or maybe you're mirroring this and, and wanting to patch it up with someone or or make amends or see if there's still an ability to build with someone. But it doesn't seem like anyone's speaking. It feels like maybe both people are I don't know if it's trying to busy themselves with work or, I don't know, ego doesn't come into this one, but ego comes into that one. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but loyalty is a very big word for, for my nine of pentacles lady, but it's self-made. It's, it's independent. It's like, I don't need anybody. I'm good on my own, but ultimately, you know, I'll welcome people who are going to, you know, prove themselves, you know, very Scorpio energy. It's like, I got, I got to get kind of like a pulse on you before I let you into my tribe. I think maybe that's what this person is doing. They're maybe trying, this sounds creepy. I don't mean for it to, but it's like, they're watching you from afar. They're, they're trying to get a pulse on you. Um, so especially for, for my Scorpio women who are interested in women, this may actually come together sooner than later. Um, I, I don't know about the rest. I don't know about the rest. They're not great action cards though. It's people who are very focused on their money and their finances. Someone may be moving out independently, especially if they did get a divorce or, or split up from a partnership. There, it's like the silent treatment or again, watching but not saying anything. Why is that? But an offer wants to be made. So uh, an offer is being manifested. So I don't know if it's from this person per se. I do kind of like this energy though. Um, here is where it got complicated though. It's like they don't know if they're allowed to have feelings for you or if they should have feelings for you. Maybe they do and they're telling themselves, hey, it's not an option because Scorpio is taken. Or maybe they reached out and you didn't respond and so they took that as rejection. I don't know, but someone is working to manifest an offer. So if this is you, Scorpio, I would say keep working on your manifestations. It may come from a secret source or I want to rephrase that some sort of offer or connection you're meeting your next person if you're looking for something new it may come in kind of unexpectedly something sort of magical or mystical or spiritual it's almost like divine intervention I don't think you're going to be single that much longer but there might be an offer that comes to you sooner than maybe what you think this is because this one does seem a little bit complicated I'm not saying it couldn't be I'm just I have a lot of question marks I, I don't I don't have much certainty on what's going on here so you know I can only relay what I what I see and what I read 
All right, zodiac signs that want to come out in this reading. You have Taurus, you have Aries, you definitely have Cancer, I see that. Um, and you have Sagittarius as well. Again, possibly Pisces and Capricorn, Gemini, Virgo. You, you know, I, I just feel like I just named them all. But anyway, <clears throat> someone may be holding on to secret feelings for you or trying to get you to reach out to them. That could be it as well. If they're not taking action, they may be hoping that you reach out. But I don't think you will because, I, you know, no shade, Scorpio, but I think you're too proud. That's sort of what this feels like to me. Again, there's ego here and there there isn't here of it because... I don't know. This person has been brought down to their knees. So it's like they're they're waking up with optimism. They're they're trying to turn over a new leaf um, or turn over a new page, whatever that expression is. So let's see. The evil eye protection. Interesting. I, I don't even know what to do with that. So maybe that's significant for someone out there. It could have to do with this, this manifestation, trying to manifest love in your life. I don't know. I don't know. Again, like the one and the magician, something about that feels connected. There might be a Gemini or a Virgo who's trying to manifest you back into their into your life. I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't share that. Every now and then I hear things in my head and I'm like, nope, that would be rude. I won't say that. Uh, I would be careful with that energy, especially with the Gemini Virgo stuff. And then this says, full moon in Taurus, your dreams need a practical plan. And that makes sense to me because, again, this whole, like, I have these overwhelming feelings for Scorpio, but do could we actually get on the same page and, and build a life together or whatever it is you're looking to achieve? This person has question marks about, if, I don't know if it's their love will be returned or, again, different goals for the future. It could even be the idea of someone who wants marriage and someone who doesn't. You know, maybe this is independent, single, bachelorette, bachelor lifestyle, and this is like, I very much want the tradition of marriage and wedding rings and you know the church and all that um it could be that you guys are, are on different pages um what didn't i do this guy okay we'll do one more <clears throat> for scorpio and then this says pleasure it has a little deer in it <sighs> let's see pleasure i don't know what to do with this one something about a step up raising your standards raising the bar Deer spirit. Some of you may have had a dream about a deer or seen a deer. Something about that might be significant. So Google deer spirit. I don't really know what to do with that. But it's a gentle creature, right? Um, <clears throat> pleasure and sensuality with the Taurus stuff too. Something naturey, nature dates. I don't know. Maybe you're dealing with a Taurus or someone who has very strong earth in their chart. I'll leave that up to your interpretation, Scorpio. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, guys. Please do like the video. It really does help me. I appreciate you guys so much. You know I love reading for Scorpio. Uh, like the video, subscribe, all those good things, and I will see you next week for more tarot. Bye, Scorp. Hello, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Let's take a look at your love life. Who's coming in? What is their energy presenting as? Do they have feelings? What are their feelings? And potential action towards you, all right? Let's do it for Sagittarius. Messages for their best and highest good, please. So how is this person presenting? A little bit closed off, maybe a little bit guarded, but they are going to open up and make some sort of offer to you. I love that. They might be very choosy with who they give their love to. Um, and then the death card. So possibly a Scorpio. It could also be sort of this idea of someone, <laughs> there's a couple messages here, someone who is looking for like a very deep, transformative love. Um, when Scorpio energy comes through, it's sort of like that till death do us part, you know, undying loyalty type of vibe, right? So this could be someone who's looking for the real thing. So if you're not, it might not actually be something that lasts very long if you guys are on a different page. Not to get all dark immediately on you, right? But I mean, the death card did come out. Um, so it could be mean that somebody extended an offer and then kind of closed themselves off and put an end to something because they had second thoughts. Uh, we'll keep pulling, but there, then there's another storyline here too. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, it's not coming to me. I had it in my head and then it went away. So I feel like spirit is like, don't worry about that. All right. So, well, you know, happy, happy, uh, sorry. The happy version of this is we'll assume it's a Scorpio. Um, if not, again, it's someone who's looking for undying loyalty um, or the idea of something that they, I don't know, it's like they extend themselves, they extend an offer, they put themselves out there, they ask you out and then they sort of go cold on you. And so it might be leaving you kind of questioning things. So, um, <laughs> So now that we have three narratives going, let's see. What, what is this person's ultimate feelings towards Sagittarius, please? They're waiting. What are they waiting for? They're waiting for you to show some sort of emotion. The Queen of Cups. 
<coughs> Gosh, it's such a complicated card, you guys, really, especially in this version. She always looks so angry. Her cup is closed off. That being said, it does represent Cancerian energy, right? As in cardinal water, the zodiac sign of Cancer. So it's like there's a well of emotions. There's a lot of love to give there, but it's going to, again, there's something about being very choosy. It's being given to the right person. Um, and so with that, the, you know, the Queen of Cups ultimately is the initiator of emotions, right? That That's sort of like the job, that maternal instinct of, you know, the Cancerian energy. Now, I don't know if maybe you're dealing with one or you have that in your chart or that just represents one of you here. This person is waiting for this person to make the first move. So I don't know which you are. I mean, this is fire energy, so maybe that's you. But when I'm asking about the emotions, it's almost at a standstill. It's like both people are, um, there's a good word for it, not playing chicken, but uh, do you know what I mean? It's like the everybody's waiting for the other person to do something. <clears throat> so that's confusing. <laughs> Why is this person waiting? They're waiting, but they're watching, or they're waiting, but they're looking, or keeping keeping their options open, or it's like they're trying to get more information, on, maybe on you, Sag. I I like the Queen of Cups showing up showing up in the feelings, but when it's with the waiting card, it's like there's feelings there, but they're not being expressed. So maybe this person is trying to put an end to some sort of relationship before they move forward and make some sort of offer to you. I actually do like that very much if that's the case. That would sort of explain to me why there's a closed off energy and a death card. You know, maybe you're up next in this person's life. Maybe they're putting an end to a, a relationship, in which case they're not totally available, but maybe they've sort of flirted with you or I don't know, maybe they've asked you out and, you know, maybe I don't know, maybe they're finalizing the divorce. It could be, it could be something like that. It doesn't have to to be but in which case maybe it's like they're not ready to move forward with something until something else in their life has fully come to an end or to a close you know maybe they're going through I don't know some sort of you know personal issue where they just don't have time to date or feed the relationship in which case maybe they let you know that they're interested but they're just not able to move forward in it right now until something major in their life transforms I actually like that narrative that makes more sense to me here so it's like they're waiting and planning for you um <clears throat> planning to ask you out it's almost like they're sitting on a lot of emotions or a lot of feelings but it's not necessarily being expressed they're just thinking them through it's like they're still processing their emotions here why is this queen of cups sort of guarded or held off Lib liberation all right so I don't know, this might be someone who's not looking to be tied down, which is kind of an interesting dynamic to the Queen of Cups because it tends to be a little bit more on the traditional side for me as a reader. Same with the Queen of Pentacles. It, it is the type of queen. Now, you know, it's not so much a gender thing. It's just the, the hierarchy of the court cards, right? But um, yeah, Queen of Cups is someone who, again, more traditional, looking to put a title on it or put a ring on it or, or make something official or, you know, Facebook status or, you know, whatever, whatever. Here, though, with the fool, there's something kind of unusual or different or oppositional or erratic. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. It's almost like being freed from something that was holding them back, maybe in their love life. Um, so I don't know if this is you, Sagittarius. Maybe it is. Maybe you're a Pisces rising or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't know. But <clears throat> yeah, instead of being closed off in terms of looking for like, or hold on, how do I want to phrase this? <clears throat> Instead of closing themselves off to other options because they've decided on one, it almost has the opposite of just like, I'm not really looking to be tied down right now. So that feels a little bit Sagittarius to me, but, you know, not across the board. That That's not going to be everyone's story. So interesting dynamic. It's like I... With the fool coming through on the emotions, it's someone who wants to be free and lucky and love and, you know, the world is my oyster. But it's a little bit more complicated than that, maybe because of past drama in, in each other's love life, you know? As much as you kind of want to hit reset and, and look at the world as, you know, full of possibility and, you know, hopeless romantic, looking for my soulmate... Uh, someone, and I'm not saying it's necessarily you, but someone, if not both of you, are a little bit jaded. You're a little bit closed off. Maybe you have some trust issues because of what's what's occurred in the past. So it's interesting. It's like that's what we're desiring here, to again, to just fall in love, and it's lucky, and it's beautiful, and it's magical, and that is still definitely available to you, but both people need to sort of 
warm up a little bit or both people maybe need to take some sort of leap of faith with the fool that there are good people out there and not everything is going to end in you getting your heart broken or vice versa you breaking someone else's heart so it's a little bit complicated it's a little bit moody sometimes with the queen of cups i think that's a good word interesting so the fool can sometimes represent aquarius honestly of all the major arcana the fool can represent a lot of signs to me especially aries uh definitely aquarius and sometimes sagittarius too it's kind of like that very youthful energy but for me it's it's uranian but ultimately he holds the white rose because he's looking for something pure and fresh and untainted right so I don't know, is this something coming fr back from your past and you guys have some stuff to work through, you know? If that's the case, maybe that's why the Scorpio card is coming through. It's like breathing new life into something that you thought was dead. Maybe something that you thought was closed off comes back around and makes an offer to you, in which case you kind of have to think if, if you're going to respond to this person or not, because maybe you're worried that they're still holding a grudge, or maybe your lifestyles were very different. Maybe you wanted kind of, I don't know, maybe somebody here wanted an open relationship and somebody wanted to close it on up and be like, we're together this is this you know what i mean so it, very interesting dynamic here so potential action this person may take towards sagittarius the lovers all right so it does say you both you have a lot to work through in order for this to come together now keep in mind it could still be a complete stranger but the lovers card frequently does indicate you know a relationship that has been through something and it's like a mountain has come between you so it's like you know we, we have to meet each other halfway we both have to put equal amounts of work in now if this is a brand new person entering your life it's just saying you both kind of have some bigger fish to fry in the coming week or two um in order to prepare for this relationship to kind of enter your life so there is assessment here so not great action cards to be honest though this isn't this isn't negative in any means i mean there's always an angel kind of guiding the lovers versus you know in the devil card it's a complete opposite vibe right it's being shackled and imprisoned by some sort of force or entity right um it's almost like this is all happening in divine timing so i you know i know i know sagittarius wants it wants it now right we want action we want it to happen but this is almost saying put your faith in the universe put your trust in the universe because this is going to come together when it's supposed to someone is still either an assessment of what they want or planning how they're going to come into your life <clears throat> when they're in a better spot financially or when they're feeling more balanced or when they know if this is from the past when they know that I, they can actually give to this relationship uh, and, and sort of match the energy that you are putting in Sagittarius all right let's see zodiac signs that want to come out in this reading Gemini Taurus Scorpio Aquarius Cancer those are the ones I see let's see what the dice say Let's see, Virgo, Aries, Libra, and Gemini. <clears throat> All right, emotions are running high, the super moon. So something about this may culminate during a uh, full moon. I think we have a really intense full moon coming up in Aquarius. It's being squared by a, by a lot of planets. So yeah, there, that could potentially bring the breakthrough of something. But again... I'm not necessarily being like, yeah, that full moon's going to be awesome for you because there's a lot of intense energy. So there may be re a revelation of feelings, um, but it's possible that both people are going to have to kind of think about, uh, you know, how you want to proceed forward or, or again, if you're going to respond or something like that. <clears throat> so this says inner peace. Yeah, so again, with, with this card, it's like, trust the universe. I don't think you need to invite drama or chaos into your life. If something isn't coming together organically, you might be best to just wait for a better match. Or I don't mean put your life on pause, but if you're putting in, you know, your heart and soul and energy and you're not getting that back, then maybe that's a sign that it's not a good match for you right now at this moment. So in which case, you know, fool energy, just go about your day. You know, there, there really are, ironically, plenty of fish in the sea, as this card would indicate, right? I know, I know. You're thinking about that one. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Let's see. And this says recycle, recover. So again, that does say to me uh, something about coming coming back or something that is familiar to you or being changed or transformed into something else it quite literally says hello again so i don't know for most of you the more i look at this this probably isn't something brand new you know if you don't want to be with your your ex or whatever more power to you that's totally fine i would look out for maybe a gemini or a taurus or a water sign in your future for something new but for a lot of you yeah it seems like something is coming back around to see if i don't want to say if you'll take the bait but to see if you're still interested and if you guys can make it work this time. That's what I see here. All right, thank you so much, Sagittarius. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.
right, Capricorn, what's up? Let's see what's your love life. For Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs, who's coming in? What are their feelings and what are their potential actions towards Capricorn? All right, here we go. How is this person presenting? What is their energy, their storyline, their narrative? <laughs> They're horny. Capricorn with the Ace of Wands. Yeah, oh my God. With these two, legit. They are thinking about you at night in bed. Dot, dot, dot. Let's see. But they, they might be holding back or this person may actually have kind of control issues or I don't know. Or I don't know if this is someone that you've already kind of been with and broken up with or you just had something very kind of like casual, you know, friends with benefits, whatever it was. They're still holding on to the fact that they want to be with you or ask you out. Um, and it feels like they're tr they're working on a plan to try and impress you or they're trying to figure out how to win you back or how to ask you out. Maybe they know what's due to you as an apology, but they're still kind of, um, you know, their ego is getting in the way. So there's a lot of things coming through. Not to say this couldn't be new. Um, it's funny. I keep doing these readings and a lot of times the past keeps coming into them. So I'm not setting that intention, but I have to trust that there's something astrological logically that you know I think there's a there's a lot of Pluto energy in, in the sky so uh, obviously you know all the planets in Leo they're being opposed by Pluto right so as everything makes its way through it's uh yeah <laughs> there, there's a lot of talk about the past and bringing up things that we thought were dead and buried that kind of thing so um I do think this person likes you. I think maybe they didn't show face or they didn't let you know how much they were kind of falling for you, especially if they were the one who was kind of non-committal or just wanted more of a physical relationship. It's possible that they may have children from another marriage or children might be involved in this. And so they obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, hopefully, you know, that's their priority is making sure that their kids are good. But maybe that doesn't always allow them to take risks in their love life that they feel like they want to take, but they may hold themselves back because... I I don't know they might be very protective of their kids and rightfully so but yeah i, I don't know there, there's a couple things coming through there so let's uh, let's do a little bit more what are their actual feelings towards capricorn you may have also been kind of encouraging this person to like hey let's let's meet up again or that was fun what are you doing this week and the thing is they may have been holding back but they do think about you and i almost sense that there's like a feeling of guilt here too how do they feel about Capricorn? They feel like they lost you or they disappointed you or they let you down. They, again, with the Page of Cups, sometimes they, you know, there might be a, a thing here of feeling like they owe you an apology. What do they feel like they've lost here? The communication with you or, or they didn't return the messages or they didn't move fast enough. They're, they're feeling like they, they lost out. Um, there could have been distance that came in between this as well, or, or multiple suitors. That's possible. What remains here? The two of cups. So interesting. I, I think on, I think they're, they're lost in their feelings, right? <laughs> Instantly I can feel Capricorn just like, ugh, stomach turns. But no, I, I mean, they're in the thick of their emotions. It's a five, right? So we're in the middle of the narrative. It's, it's not, this is not the end. This is not how it ends. Um, what they feel they've lost, they're focused on what has been lost, what has been spilled here. With, with Ace of Wands, it has to do with communication or the ability to move forward and see you, or again, possibly keeping open multiple lines of communication, and maybe that wasn't cool with you, like maybe you thought you were looking for something more exclusive. I don't know. That's typically what Eight of Wands can represent, or something like distance or travel. I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, jobs pulled you guys apart, and now you're not in the same area, whatever it is. The two cups that remain, though, here, quite literally, is the two of cups so this idea that if i could just get past my own like bullshit if i could just get out of my own way you know i do i do still see a future with capricorn even if it's just dating and connecting and friendship but they've turned their back to that because they don't realize that that's a possibility um, and, and I mean, is it? You're watching this reading, right? So I mean, do you know who this is? Is it a possibility if they wanted to reconnect with you, with you would you allow them back in? So, it's a, no offense, Capricorn, no offense. But if for some of you who are like, yeah, no, nah, I'm good, you're lying to yourself, though. That's what I just heard. And like, again, no offense. I have no horse in this race. But for some of you, if two cups remain, it is indicating. But yeah, there might be something there that should this person come back into your life, you might want to just double check. Or do you understand what I mean? Like you may just want to like 
kind of inquire what it is that they're looking for or why they're back in your life. If if they're able to make that happen, and I don't know, it's the five of cups sometimes can be like lost in the sauce. You know, this person may be um, drinking or, or using drugs or doing something to kind of numb the pain. And for all I know, maybe they are going through a significant chapter of pain or grief or loss. Maybe this has nothing to do with you per se. Yeah, I mean, maybe they, I, and I'm not predicting this, but maybe they lost a parent. Maybe they lost a job. Maybe they, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe they're going through something very personal. And in which case that would be sort of this half in half out like I want to date and I like Capricorn, but something is stopping me from fully connecting with them or fully allowing myself to sort of emote and, and you know, share my experiences and, and give my heart to Capricorn. It's like this person stops themselves short as much as they want to move away from, I don't know, loss, grief, feeling very rejected, whatever this is. I do think that they like you. I, I think that, you know, they see you as a good match for them, potentially. If you did act on it, the sex was fire. You know, the physical stuff, they love your body. They think about you. As as we started the reading saying, like, that's, that's still very much in their mind. But with the Two of Cups, there is something more pure about it in terms of, like, a loving connection. So, I mean, I think they still like you. And then, well, this is this person going to take any action towards Capricorn? To be honest, it feels like they feel as though they've already missed their window. So if you're watching this going, no, no, they haven't. Well, why aren't you reaching out to them? <clears throat> Just putting that out there. Potential action. Yeah, frozen. I don't like that card for action at all. They're going through a major transformation, though. So maybe you know it's not a good time to, to show up back up in their life or show up in their life again. Um, they might be going through, a, again, a mourning or a grieving period or, or needing to, to kind of remove or, or withdraw or like a period of isolation. Maybe that's what's helping them heal or maybe they're going through something very personal where, you know, they're asking for privacy or something like that. So then after they come out of that, it's like the snow thaws and the Knight of Cups makes love offers. So interesting, Capricorn. This actually, can I get one more for that? Yeah, I actually think, uh, uh, I don't get, I haven't gotten this reading a lot, but in terms of their action, if you can be patient, again, don't put all your eggs in one basket if they're not doing that for you. Um, don't put your life on pause for anyone, but I actually think this person will reach back out to you again because there are feelings there. Um, and yes, the physical connection is very important to them. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I think they do ultimately want more than that. And I'm not saying all of you maybe slept with them or whatever, but a significant amount of you, it felt like, you know, dating, flirting, whatever, maybe you slept together a few times and then it just kind of fizzled or something happened and maybe you didn't have clarity on it. I do think this person was holding back and telling you what they were really going, what was really going on in their life, but I don't necessarily think it had to do too much with you or in terms of having multiple partners. Again, that, that's more the exception uh, for, from what I see here. Um, but I think this is an excellent Capricorn card. It's like, psh, yeah, I know I'm good. <laughs> um, so just keep doing you. That's what this person likes about you. Knight of Cups is very optimistic about trying to move forward with a love offer. Um, and who knows, maybe if this person is kind of has uh, frozen themselves out from your life, maybe this Knight of Cups represents something brand new that's coming into your life, but only time will tell. Zodiac signs that want to come out in this reading for Capricorn. Let's see. We have Sagittarius. We have Pisces. We have Libra and Virgo. All right. Oracle card for... I almost called you Pisces. That's weird. You might be dealing with one. Capricorn, Capricorn, what can I share with them? So this says, don't let pride get in your way, full moon in Leo. And that's definitely sometimes what comes through with this uh, Four of Pentacles card. And it is a Capricorn card too. So, you know, keep in mind, a lot of times the uh, the messages that we get in tarot, it is kind of a mirror reflection of, of what both people are going through. Maybe not in an identical way, but worth thinking about, worth thinking about. Maybe you're dealing with a Leo, who knows? Don't let pride get in your way. If you want to reach out to this person, you know, go for it. You know, I, I don't know what their response would be. They might still hold back even if you do reach out, in which case maybe you learn that lesson like, oh, okay, I'm not going to touch that. But you don't, you don't know until you try. So you're never going to say the wrong thing to the right person. I, I think that's, that's really important. This says purification. Yeah. So it almost feels like symbolically, this person is kind of going through the rainstorm. Um, but you know, after, after the rainstorm, the clouds part and the sun comes out again. And that's what this feels like with the Empress energy. It's, it's fertile, it's lush, it's abundant. Again, something about children may play a significant role in this as well. You'll know if that's your, your uh, story or not. Um, but I, again, that's very optimistic to me. Um, yeah, the, the, like the rains of purification, you know, water energy washing away what is no longer needed. 
<clears throat> getting healthy, getting clean. For some of you, your person may be going through um, sobriety. <clears throat> for Capricorn, please, for Capricorn. And then this says mountains and obstacles. Interesting. So you didn't have the lover's card come up, but sometimes there's a mountain between the lovers, right? If you know the traditional rider weight thing. I think this is saying later down the road, this is going to come together. But I love that there's mountains in the background because you, Capricorn, you're the mountain goat. So it's almost like you're, you're the... You're the destination point, you know? It's like this person is on the path, this person is on the road, but they're trying to get to you. Um, now, along the way, like, it's not just like you're the, the goalpost, so to say. I think, oh, <laughs> this is funny. Um, although I think, you know, wh whatever this person is on, they're on like a soul journey or a soul path. And I think in a lot of ways, they do need to cater to their own needs right now. Um, they probably don't have a lot of time to invest in a relationship. So hopefully when they do come to you, they come correct, right? Um, but I think they do see you in the distance and I think they know if they get better or do better or something, you know, you might be waiting for them at the end, so to say. Um, also, running races is coming through. I don't know if that's you or them or something about training for a marathon or running a race or, I don't know, sneakers. I don't know. Something about that is coming through. Anyway, that's what I got for you, Capricorn. Please do like the video, guys. I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're not already, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I do weekly readings every Friday, 6 p.m. Join me here again at the Intuitive Teacup for more tarot. I will see you next week. Thanks, guys. All right, Aquarius gang, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. What's up, guys? I hope you're doing well. Let's uh, let's go ahead and check in on your love life. Who's coming in? What are their feelings and what are their actions towards you? Again, for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's do it. Messages for Aquarius is best and highest good, please. How is this person presenting? Who's coming in? It's their storyline. Uh-oh. Same thing Capricorn got. They're thinking about you in, a, in the sexual sense. Uh-oh. But you've, you've kicked them out in the cold or you've frozen them out or you're really putting them through the ring or they're feeling like they're, you're cracking the whip on them. It, it's like you called them on their bad behavior or their, um, I don't know, just not showing up. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's an immaturity factor to them. Um, and I don't know, if, if it was a physical connection, it seems like maybe you're looking for something more and this person is, they're just struggling to get it together for you. Uh, I think they want to, but I, I think they sense that you're, you're leaving them behind. Yeah, they... Like, like you're coming down with uh, like, uh, like cracking the whip again. Something about like the King of Swords is very like the law and and calling a spade a spade. You know, calling them out on their BS. That's what this feels like. Um, but they, I, I don't know. If it's not sex, it doesn't have to be. But Ace of Wands is a very sexual card. They had a lot of passion. They had a lot of enthusiasm, excitement for you. I think they thought you were very fun. You were very playful, you know, creative, all those lovely things. But I don't know. You, I think they sense that you've almost become sort of the the authority figure in the relationship and you're you're cracking the whip and here's the thing i almost get a sense that you're dealing with someone aquarius who maybe doesn't always have their shit together or they just they they self-sabotage or they get in their own way and i think for a lot of you you are rooting for this person you want them to do well but at some at some point you're also kind of like i don't want this to be my problem anymore though like i don't want to be your parents i want to be your romantic partner that sort of thing so interesting so i don't know if you've totally cut this person out of your life but it almost feels like you've threatened it and so maybe this person is really it, it almost i get the sense like they're running on the treadmill it's like they're trying to to catch up they're trying to make good on their promise to change themselves but they're stuck in a rut. It's like they just can't get out of their own way or they're experiencing some sort of crisis, health crisis, financial crisis. Um, yeah, so something is being removed or threatened to be cut off. Um, and maybe it's money. Maybe they rely on their parents for money or, or I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe they're getting kicked out of their apartment. And I'm not saying through any fault of their own. I don't know. But there's something where it's like, we'll do it. You have to get it together. And, and you're being just very blunt about it. And I don't know if this person is used to being coddled or they're just, again, I, I don't mean to offend or insult anybody, but there's something maybe a little bit immature about their energy. Um, and I think you probably like their playfulness. You probably like their childlike enthusiasm. But at some point it's like, yeah, but I want, I, I want to date an adult, right? I, I don't want to date someone who's like Peter Pan complex, all right? All right, so then how does this person feel about Aquarius? What's going on in the emotions? What's going on in the feelings? They are, they are trying to get it together for you because they think that you're their soulmate. I think you're the best thing that's happened to them in a really long time and they don't want to lose you. Um, but they're, they know that they already risk losing you. This is a very unusual reading. <sighs> 
there's a lot of stress in their life right now. And maybe some of it is um, due to their own lack of initiative. Like maybe they let things pile up and now it feels like they're at a crisis point or they're at a breaking point again, possibly with work or job or finances. Um, I think they want things to be easy. I think they want the Cinderella story. I think they see themselves as being able to mature enough to win you back or, to, again, to make good on some sort of promise to you. But they're not there yet. But are there feelings and affection? Yes, absolutely. And I think they're worried that they're going to lose you. But it's, it's actually putting even more pressure on them. But not necessarily in a way that's motivating them. If anything, it feels like another kick in the gut that you're like, if you don't do this, you're going to lose me. And so I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't do anything in terms of an ultimatum. Because to be honest, it feels like the writing is already on the wall here. I think you've already made your point. And, and rightfully so when it comes down to self-respect. I'm not saying you shouldn't have or whatever. But it's almost like kicking this person when they're already down, at least in their perspective. I'm not saying that that's an accurate depiction of what's really going on here. But from their perspective, it's like they were already going through something and then you're kind of uh, giving them grief about it too. And so, there, I don't know, there is an element to this that is a little bit self-pitying or sad sack. So I get it. I get it. You want this person to step up and, and do the right thing. <clears throat> Anything else in terms of feelings? Yeah, they sense that you're walking away and it's scaring the shit out of them. Or the opposite, or maybe not the opposite. You already have walked away. And again, it's like that. I'm trying to make up for lost time. I'm trying to catch up to Aquarius and show them that I, I can do better. But it, there is something about this that it's being relayed to me as a child. It's like this person may have abandonment issues. This person may have not grown up in a stable household. And so they yearn for that like comfort of stability and consistency. And I think you gave that to them. But when you threaten to walk away I think I just have to be honest with you Aquarius it's doing actually a lot more damage than you realize and I don't really know what why that's being relayed to you because I'm not necessarily trying to make this this person's problem your problem right especially if it is your romantic counterpart but there is something about a lot of psycho psychological damage of this person freaking out, like, please don't leave me. Like, I, I need you. I can't do this without you. It's There's a desperation here. Um, and I, I don't think that's healthy either. So, like, I, I don't really know what to say here. But I, I do think there's feelings here. But you guys are definitely going through a, a challenging chapter together where... At least one of you is like, I may have to call it quits because this just isn't working with the King of Swords, which is my Aquarius card, right? Whether you're male, female, whatever you identify with. Um, because we can't just live in this sort of, again, like never, never land. Everything will work out hopelessly optimistic. Like life gets tough. And when we experience it, we either like we have to show up for ourselves first and foremost before we show up for each other. And it, it doesn't feel equal. It feels like you've quote unquote saved this person or gotten them out of a tricky situation multiple times. Maybe you've lent them money. Maybe you've, I don't know. It seems like you've really gone out on a limb to, to help this person get on the right track or get better you know maybe they're dealing with sobriety or, or something like that or maybe they're I don't know like pissing their money away on things that they shouldn't but at, at what point though I almost think I'm wanting to lean into the storyline of like there has to be a repercussion or else this person is really never going to change their action or change the tune of their song so I, I get why you're having to kind of lay down the law and, and give them some sort of ultimatum or finality here because here's the thing they are showing up but I, I would be careful that they're not emotionally manipulative in trying to get you back because I think this person has a lot of things that they need to sort out for themselves. So that's sort of what's coming through here. Um, a potential action towards Aquarius in, in the future. So, okay, trying to, trying to level things out, trying to maintain their balance. Maybe not trying to live their life, life in like extremes or all or nothing mentality. Like a, 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 drop, a drop in the bucket adds up over time, I'm wanting to say. So it's like maybe practicing better balance and again, moderation, temperance maybe. <clears throat> I do, to be honest though, there's a beggar in this card, right? It's frequently a card of charity and donation and giving giving one's time and energy selflessly. But I think this person, as much as they envision themselves being able to pay you back or give back to the relationship, their soonest action is probably going to be begging you to take them back or begging you to reconsider or, again, like the don't leave me, give me a little bit more time. This is tricky because I, I could see where it would pull at your heartstrings because you're not trying to be an a-hole, right?
right? You're not trying to make this person's life more difficult than it needs to be. But in some ways, it's like this had nothing to do with you. In a lot of ways, this person maybe dug their own grave. <clears throat> and maybe you are dealing with like, I don't know, maybe you have a child who, who who's going through like a, a rough period of time or an addiction. Or again, accountability is really important here. Um, and yeah, and someone is not wanting to say like they dug their own grave or they, they made their own bed. Now they have to lie in it. <clears throat> Because here's the thing, I think at what point are you enabling them to continue bad behavior or just whatever this is, right? Just make sure you're not in the enabler role. And maybe some of you realize that you were, and I almost see this as a bittersweet walking away. I do really like this person. I do really love this person. But ultimately, me being in their life right now is not serving them because I, I you know, I'm, again, enabling or something like that. And so... Yeah, I think this person wants to commit to you. I think this person wants to commit to a new lifestyle and make themselves better, but that might be something that they need to find their own footing on their own for a bit before they come back into your life. Because I do see them reaching out to, you know, with their hand out uh, in some way, even if it's not financially, energetically, they're, they're looking for you to like give them a ride or, or to do something like that. Um, yeah, this to me is saying, allow them to commit to their own independence. It, you can still be their friend, you know, you can still support them from afar or be their biggest cheerleader, but energetically, I think you have to stop giving because that's never going to stop. It, it's just like, <laughs> they know that you have like long pockets or you're very generous. And so you've always been that person they can rely on. But again, at, at what point are you denying them the ultimate lesson of them needing to, to step up and be independent? Um, if none of this is making sense and you're still here, which I doubt, but if you're looking for something totally new, because this is not new, you guys have a history here or a past. If you're looking for something totally new, I would look for a Virgo or a Taurus, especially a Taurus, uh, maybe even a Cancer. So for Zodiac signs coming up here, you have Double Capricorns, which is the name of a, an album. <laughs> Robert Schwartzman. I used to listen to that in middle school, I think. Let's see. Uh, double Capricorns. You have Leo and you have Libra. We'll roll again. Anyone else? And Cancer. All right. Oracle cards for Aquarius. This has been a long reading. Sorry, guys. But there's some baggage here. Major baggage. I wish good luck to both of you. So look at that. Prosperity lies ahead, a new moon in Taurus. I do think this person has the ability to get their shit together and come back to you because they really want that. This is actually kind of similar to the Capricorn reading, um, but you have to give them time. And I think sometimes you have to make the difficult decision of practicing tough love. I think really that that's what to do here. <clears throat> maybe you're dealing with a Taurus, maybe something about, uh, I don't know, Scorpio season. There, there could be something there as well. In Scorpio season, we're going to have a new moon in Taurus, so... This says power, all right? Uh, to me, that feels manipulative, too. It's like when someone is going through crisis, you're the first person they reach out to. And again, that's fine. I'm not saying you have to sever ties or cut off communication, though I think some of you will, and maybe that's necessary. But you can't come in and rescue this person every time. Um, and, and to me, that, that might even be a bit of a red flag, too. If they have no one in their life that they can call, was at some point in time this relationship codependent? You know, just, just asking the question. I don't mean to offend. And this says succulent. Resilience. See, I like that. I think this person is more resilient than they realize. I think this person is, is really going to learn about their own inner strength and tenacity. So allow them that gift of discovery, Aquarius, okay? That's what I got for you this week, guys. Thank you so much. Um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will see you next Friday at 6 p.m. for more tarot. Bye, Aquarius. Hey, Pisces. What's up? Pisces, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Let's see who's coming in for you romantically. What is their energy? What are their feelings towards you? And will they take any action? Let's see. Pisces, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Let's talk about their person. Messages for their best and highest good, please. How is this person presenting? What's their energy? Ooh, interesting. Confidence. They're coming through with confidence. They sleep well at night. They sleep, sleep easy at night knowing that, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's ego or they're just very confident, but it kind of like, yeah, I know I'm awesome. I don't know if I hate it though. I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying anything yet until I see more. Hopefully it's not narcissistic or egotistical, but, um, there could also be sexting, too. With the Queen of Wands, that can be very kind of fiery, passionate communication with the Ace of Swords at night, lying in bed, sleeping. Um, sometimes the, the, I mean, typically, <clears throat> standard definition of uh, the Four of Swords is like rest, recuperation, meditation. So if it's someone brand new, it's almost like they're planning coming in and making some sort of big, passionate offer. If you're already kind of sort of dating someone and, and you're 
inquisitive as if they're going to propose to you or take things to the next level, I would say yes. That that feels like they're planning big things for you that are very warm, very passionate, very lush, to, you know, to grow into the future. So you may even adopt a pet together or there's some circumstance around a pet, a dog, a cat, some, or, and it could be any animal. Something very significant that happens between you guys or some sort of connection you have or you'll know what that is if that's your story. But anyway, all right, tell me a little bit more. Uh, feelings this person has towards Pisces. Thank you. Those came out all together. Till death do us part. Yeah, this person is proposing. They're, uh, they're, they're, there's something about looking back to the past for something to bring into the future. So I don't know, for one or two of you, it's possible this could be a connection from your past. That's not the main thing coming through, but it could be. With Judgment and the Death card and the Page of Cups, there could be an apology or a big message coming through, maybe unexpectedly. Maybe for you, if you're just like chilling and you're not really thinking about anyone from your past, it, it could be that this maybe catches you off guard, but it feels very big. You know, uh, Pluto energy, you know, especially with, you know, the planets moving through Leo right now, there is a lot of sort of things being brought up from the past or a lot of like intense energy that, you know, let's let's clear it out once and for all or let's breathe new life into it so that it can change and transform and, and really thrive and grow this time. Um, this does almost feel like the element of blowing on a, a fire to try and get, you know, that oxygen to get the flames to grow. There is something about that so obviously symbolically, right? It's like we're trying to rekindle the passion here maybe. Maybe uh, the honeymoon phase is gone. Maybe it started off hot and heavy, and now we're trying to get that, that feeling back. For most of you, though, this actually feels kind of optimistic to me. And I know that's a weird thing to say when the death card comes through, but this does kind of feel like a proposal or something that maybe comes through in your life that is a real game changer. It's like an offer that could really transform your life. And this almost feels like choirs of angels singing like hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Sorry, I don't know why that word was, was stuck. But... um. It feels like an awakening in your love life or something that it just feels really different and, and new and uh, life-changing. Someone that maybe you could picture yourself growing old with or something like that. Oh, stop. That makes me think of The Wedding Singer. I love that movie. I want to grow old with you. Ugh. All right. So potential action. I think the page of the page of cups is a, is an offer, but when it when there's a court card involved, it could be a big offer that you know it could be like a proposal, an emotional offer, someone offering their heart to you. Um, and it's very sweet. It's very cute. So I don't have the Ace of Wands here where it's just a physical relationship. It's someone who's very like hit it and quit it or, you know, flavor of the week type that. I don't get that at all. I think this is someone who has a lot of passion for you. They might not wear their heart on their sleeve, um, but I don't know. I do think they're a good communicator, which to me is very sexy. That's like a bare minimum requirement in any relationship is being a good communicator. But there's passionate communication. There's, it, it, you know, like energetic, excited communication here. This person loves to text you. They love to talk to you. They love hearing how, how your brain works and, you know, learning things about you, learning things with you, you know, teaching you things about their life or telling you about their life, sharing stories. I love that. I love that energy. It's like, it's like falling asleep at night, listening to the sound of your voice. Maybe you guys hop on the phone before you go to bed and there's just something very like soothing in it, you know, something like reading like a, like a story to a child at night, you know, there's something just like, ah, oh, it feels, it feels lovely. It feels cozy. Um, um, and I think you're starting to realize that this may be someone that, again, that's like you guys may make the history books together. There's like a calling or an awakening that you want to transform your life with this person and vice versa. Um, yeah, I, I really I really like that. Yeah, manifestation of something good. Someone here might be a musician. That's possible or something to do with music, dance, theater. <clears throat> Action towards Pisces. Let's see. They're coming in. It's been a struggle for them to come in, though. This person doesn't have an easy past, but th they seem to be at not a crossroads. Give me a minute. There's there's a better word for that. <clears throat> some sort of breaking point where they've been freed from some major responsibility in their life or something that was very labor intensive or irritating or nagging, but something they ultimately had to push through and do for themselves. Maybe they've reached some sort of personal goal. Maybe they've been on a health journey or something and they finally reached a point where they, they've established better consistency and, you know, daily habits and patterns that are, that are healthy. It could be something like that. Maybe they've been playing catch up at work or they've had to, I don't know, help their parents move houses or whatever it is. They were going through a period where they were very busy. They had their hands full, but the magician here almost represents to me freedom to 
communicate now. They're they're free to express themselves more, or free to move forward in in the manifestation of whatever it is that they want after this sort of very busy chapter. It is an excellent communication card. You know, it's Mercury energy. Just be careful. Mercury is in retrograde, but to be honest, that may have to do with someone from your past coming back to make something right or to revisit something with you. Or again, this could be something brand new. Um, possibly Virgo energy with the magician here. So then that's an interesting, it's almost like someone is apprehensive to reach out or apprehensive to communicate. Um, and it might be because you're already with someone or kind of sort of involved with someone. So to be honest, both these storylines might be coming through. Maybe there's someone who is checking you out and they're wanting to make something more official or... Or maybe they haven't asked you out. I don't know. Maybe you're already with someone. I, I don't know. There might be two oppor option, sorry, opportunities or options here for you, Pisces. I don't know. There's apprehension with the two of pentacles. It's like, how do I make this work together? This one or that one? Or can we combine them in a way that works and is not exhausting? I think that has to do with your person. So maybe, they, maybe this is your person needing to tie up loose ends um, or needing to let something else go, even if that's not a person. It could be a job or a responsibility or something. Some sort of a laborious undertaking, right? Um, needing to, I, I don't know, it's like they're questioning, do I have room in my life for both? How do I make this work? It's almost like, how do I work smarter, not harder? That's sort of coming through. And with the magician, maybe there's planning of it, but it's not necessarily being communicated yet. It is a good communication card, but it's being flanked by these cards of like struggle or indecision or opposition. But do keep in mind, this is not like throw out the baby with the bathwater or quit when when things get hard this is like no 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 i gotta push through i gotta power through but i also need to respect my body and my mental health in the process so it's like you know i i can only make so much um progress in a day so i just gotta keep fighting the fight and yeah it's like i think something is gonna break through here i mean i know it will i i really like this story i don't know if in the next two weeks this is gonna be life-changing but i think you pisces just need to keep manifesting whatever it is that you want and desire to make because i do like this guys i really do i i think that i think that looks nice I, I don't really have a lot of great action cards this it's this could be fighting to for, to make something happen so is somebody fighting to get you back to communicate and they're curious if you're going to let them back into their life that's sort of a storyline I, I could see there yeah there is something still uh that either needs to be revisited or i don't know seeking clarity on something from the past that it's like it just keeps pulling us back there uh, you know try as we might to release it and let go and move on something is still kind of getting in the way and mucking things up so maybe you're both going through this individually um and yeah it's, to me it's like there's something about needing to tie up loose ends before this happens so if none of that makes sense to you keep in mind that's probably going on in your person's life in which case just keep doing you this person is going to come in and divine timing you know the end anytime an angel appears in a card it's like the angels, you know, God's source spirit is guiding this journey. So have faith, have trust in that. Zodiac signs, Aries, Libra, Scorpio, and Capricorn. All right, let's get you a couple Oracle cards for Pisces. Oh, you got your own card, full moon in Pisces, balance, spirituality, and practicality. So in Virgo season, um, which let's see, is that going to be like maybe late August into mid-September? Um, we are going to have a full moon in Pisces, so something about that may bring the arrival of this storyline. It says balance, spirituality, and practicality, full moon in Pisces. <clears throat> oh, you got two. Tricky, tricky. Feather, messages. See, I love that. Communication. That feels very uh, magician energy. And then knot, relationships. Tie in the knot. Yes, yeah, some of you may get proposed to if you're already with a person and, and you're thinking. It's almost like this person may have something that they need to finalize before they're able to make that proposal to you. But for some of you, this does feel like a proposal. So I like that very much. Neither of those cards have come out yet. So I love that. I love that. That makes me think of Cancer Leo energy. <clears throat> and then this says pleasure. I think Scorpio had this card too. I don't know, something to do with going out in nature. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't read too much intuitively off of this card. Um, you know, there's steps to so something about ascension, a higher form of love, a more kind of divine feeling, seeking romantic partnership that is like a level up. Yeah, I think I think that's what comes through with this card for me. It's like a level up. Um, you're, raising, you're raising the bar higher. You're not just settling for whatever. And there's something very graceful and very gentle about the deer spirit, right? It's, you kind of have to be gentle with it. It spooks easily. And so there, yeah, there's just something about feeling like at home in a partnership and feeling very cozy and cuddled and coddled and safe. 
Um, yeah, I, I just, I like that. I like that. Look out for a deer. Maybe, maybe someone's going to see a deer in the next couple of weeks and it'll be a, a symbolic moment in your life or a message from the divine. All right. That's what I got for you, Pisces. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, leave a comment if you so desire. I would welcome that. And I will see you next Friday at 6 p.m. for more tarot here at the Intuitive Teacup. Bye guys.